Yes, people. How you doing? It's that time of the week again. The full fraud squad are in the house. Uh, Jez is missing. Hold on. Mr. Jez. <laughs> we've got we've got a man down. Let me let me try and fix this. Let's figure this out. Uh, find Ah, oh, there he is. Look, hidden away. There he is, Jez. Okay, the full fraud squad in the house. Um, he's gone missing again. Where is he? <laughs> All right, bear with me because I'm having to redo everything which I just did about five minutes ago. Not a problem. But anyway, listen, we're all here, people. Thanks for joining us again. It's North London is our show. You've got myself, Mari, and Ashmatic from Spurs. We've got Stefan, Jez, and Connor from the Arsenal. How's everyone doing, people? All good, mate. All good. good. Blessed. 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 Good. Blessed. Uh, quick shout out to Carl Patrick. Channel member, 14 months. Big up to you, my man. Thank you so much. Uh, we've got loads of people in the chat already. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Hope you are well. If you've got any questions during the show, put them in, and we will do our best to answer them. I think, look, to get things crack a lacking this week, I think we should really start on the most recent event, which was, um, you know me, I, I, I'm, I'm never nice to these Arsenal fans, but I have to say, your win against Seville for me was a really, really good win for Arsenal. Um, I think it was deserved. You had some rocky patches, your goalkeeper looking shaky again, something we're going to talk about later on, the goalie. But overall, I thought, do you know what? Really good job by Arsenal. Seville is not an easy place to go. Hostile atmosphere. They've got a fantastic record in Europe. A win, any stage in the European campaign away to Seville is a massive win. I'm going to give you some praise, guys. I thought that was really well done. Jesus was superb. Jesus was superb on the night. Um, yeah, really impressive. Uh, I mean, M Mari, Ashmatic, let's give our Spurs opinions first before we let them gloat, because they're going to love this one. <laughs> what did no, you make I of it, Mari? I thought Seville going on the road there, it's really tough. Uh, you know, those guys, they're passionate. And, you know, they're not in the league, La Liga, doing all that hot. But it's something about Seville um, and Europe, at home, it's it's difficult. It's difficult. So for Arsenal, really, you know, to a bounce back after losing the lens, they need to go to a hostile environment and just pull out a victory. No matter way, no matter how it, it is, you know, you pull out a victory there. That's the most important thing is really getting the three points and being on top of their, their table because um, that's their goal. They, they will put to be at top of their table. They don't want to be second and get to play the big boys in round of 16. So you want to be on top. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. It was a good bounce back performance for them. And um, and they could take that momentum going. I mean, they play Sheffield, you know, low block team. So it's kind of hard to break them down, but it's good momentum for them. So. What do you think, Ash? Yeah, Ash. Yeah. Well, you know, Seville, 13th place, as you said, not doing extremely well at the moment in the Liga. But saying that in Europe, they are someone to be taken serious. They're not a, a serious threat, in my opinion. Um, they're more of a Europa team. But 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 saying that, they have been in the um, Champions League quite a bit. Um, yeah, Arsenal look sharp. They look sharper. They needed to be because that Chelsea game, I felt was really, really poor. Um, they look low, below par. They, I mean, this fluid talk, God, I, I'm struggling. I'm struggling to see um, where the fluidity comes into it. However, that particular game, Jesus was on fire. Um, Jesus did look sharp. He looked like um, he looked like the business. And yeah, they, they got the deserved win. They had the better of the chances, um, I felt, on the night. Um, and yeah, Seville, to be fair, they just didn't really have, you know, the minerals. They didn't really have the minerals. But yeah, in general, um, possession-wise, obviously, wasn't too much in it. But Arsenal, to me, looked the, the better of the two teams, in my opinion. Yes, but on Jez, you must have been a happy bunny with that Seville yeah, performance. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, we got, we got through it. I mean, I wouldn't say it was... I wouldn't say it was great. Mm. Uh, we battled it down um, and we we ground it out. And that's what sometimes how you have to win. Um, 
and yeah, I, 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 I took the result. It's good, but but there's a lot of buts in that team. A lot of buts. Once again, our illustrious captain went missing. <coughs> Um, that is a concern. He did it against Chelsea. Yeah. That's a concern. We'll get to um, that. Declan Rice, uh, I thought, played very well. Jesus, I agree, stepped up. But, guys, but he's injured. Again, possibly out against Sheffield United. Well, no disrespect to Sheffield United. Will we need him? Probably not. But the fact remains, there's a lot, a lot of questions have to be asked with what Arteta does with this team in Europe. Um, I wasn't convinced. But around it, we got the result. We got the three points. Thankfully for us, PSV and Long uh, drew. And that's given us a big boost, a big boost, may I say. But we still have issues. We still have issues. Um, we proved it against you, your, your uh, Spurs. We proved it against Chelsea. A Chelsea team, let's get it right, it's pretty poor right now. Pretty poor. Mm. Yeah, we went 2-0 down. A managerial mistake in my book where he took off Mudrick and Sterling. But it helped us get us over the line. How are we going to do in, in Europe? I don't know. I don't, don't know. We've got Seville at home next game. Um, the big test is going to be, not Saturday, it's going to be next week against West against West Ham away in the Carrier Bag Cup. That's going to be the one that's going to prove to me what this team's about. Um, so I'm not taking too much out, Stel, Stelios. Of, of what happened on Tuesday night. They were poor. They are a poor team. Um, so I'm expecting much better on Saturday. I said earlier on the show, Arsenal right now, if they're on their if they're on the money, they should be piping Sheffield United six, seven, nil. They won't, because we don't have a striker. And if Jesus is out. There you go. What can I say? It ain't going to be in Ketia. And uh, it is what it is. All right, Connor, um, your thoughts. And also, I want to hear from you. What do you make of Jorginho? Uh, starting against Chelsea, playing most of the game. I think he played the whole game, didn't he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And also, starting against Seville as well. Is this is this the new Arsenal midfield with Jorginho in? Or is this something you're worried about? Um, I hope not. First of all, I hope it's not. I mean, I didn't really <laughs> expect to see Jorginho as much. I think it is down to the reason Thomas Partey has been out the uh, past couple of games and he was benched against Chelsea. I still think it's, it's severe. Whatever happened, happened if it was an injury or something else. But Chelsea, he was obviously not fully fit to start, which is fair enough. And maybe it was down to Arteta thinking, you know, Jorginho knows Chelsea, maybe. And severe, I kind of understood it because obviously Partey weren't there and I wasn't expecting to go too too attacking because severe away is difficult as we all, as we saw in the first half as well um, of the game. So the DM role made sense having the extra DM role in there with uh, with Rice and Jorginho, but it's not something I want to see permanently. No um, example for on Saturday, I want to see a more attacking midfield. Whether that means putting in Smith Rowe, Vieira, or even Kai Havertz, um, I'd rather see that than Jorginho in the team because I don't want to be playing defensive. We're at home. And it's Sheffield. Um, so hopefully not. It's not what I want to see forever. And he doesn't really offer much, really. I mean, he, you could say he makes the odd tackle now and then, but against Spurs, um, I think it was against Spurs, he wasn't great. Um, so yeah, he's not he's not the uh, the midfielder I really want in all honesty, but he's there, he does his job, but he's not perfect. Um but Sevilla, we weren't perfect at all, I think, and I probably will get a battering for this. I think first half we were awful. I was nearly falling asleep in the first half. I thought it was just very poor, boring football. I wasn't enjoying it. But then again, it was probably down to Sevilla being the better team. I thought it was personally a game of two halves. I thought Sevilla created the better chances of putting more pressure on in the first half. And then the second half, obviously, I'll take out a word. And whatever he said, we came out a different side. And then we were straight on it. So uh, that's what I will take out of that. 
Jesus is fantastic. Uh, with the injury, I'm seeing reports that it's either a minor injury and it's nothing or it's a long term. Like news reports can never get things right nowadays. So God knows what's uh, going to happen with that coming up. But if if he is out, I don't want Nketiah starting. I was on a t I was on a show with TJ about a couple of hours ago, and I said if it comes down to it, either put Trossard in the centre forward role, or if you've got to do it, put Kai Havertz in there. Because I'm Ooh. I can't I can't. Are you watching. calling for Kai Havertz, Connor? Are you calling for Kai Havertz? So I can't be watching Eddie and Ketia. I can't. I can't. I'm I'm done with it now. God is better. I'm just... fully done with Eddie and Ketia now. It's just wow. it, there's no more for me anymore. So um, listen, we'll see. We got the win against Sevilla. Listen, all I wanted was a win. I thought we'd go there and lose. So respect the team. We we went there. We got the win. We got the three points. And uh, mm. I was happy it was a convincing second half in the end. You know, Jesus won. A fantastic assist. Took down two free defenders and then passed through to Martinelli. And then his, his goal was fantastic. And it's such a shame because if he is injured, we were waiting so long for this Gabriel Jesus to come back. The one that we had at the start of the season when he signed for Arsenal. And then he got injured and then he was just taking so long to come back into things. And now we finally see him coming back into things and he's getting injured again. They'll probably have another couple months where he'll fall off again. It's such a shame, man. Uh, but I hope he's not injured, fingers crossed, because he's on a good run. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed he's not. But again, I'm not convinced this season, guys. I'm not convinced so far. I know we're up there. We're in a title race currently, but I'm just still not convinced we can do what we done last season but get over the line. But hey, that's just me. I'm interested to hear what Stefan thinks about all of my opinions now. Stefan, um, so yeah, tell us what you think as well, but I've got two questions for you. One is, yeah. um, Partey injured yet again, right? Yeah. Are you now coming to a stage as Arsenal fans where you've seriously got to consider replacing him just because he just gets injured too much? Yeah. Second question, I, yeah. um, Connor talked about the performance not being great, but the result you got. I keep hearing every week from Arsenal fans that, you know, this is controlled uh football and that the good football come at some point but then the next game i see the same and the same and the same so what i'm asking you is when is this football this good football actually going to come yeah, that's one of the questions i, I mean have. i mean oh it's, sorry Mari. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. It's, no, it's 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 fine it's uh on on the party thing yeah so you know how much i i rate party but you know the best skill and the most underrated skill is availability and you might be the greatest player ever but if you're never fit we have to we have to look for options where you know uh, i'm sure we can we can sign a top top player in that um in that role in the summer so we'll see what, what, what actually happens but in my opinion for me the Sevilla game was exactly how i expected it to go we it was going to be a very difficult game. Away to Sevilla is not easy. Uh, if you guys watch Sevilla against Real Madrid, especially in the second half, Real Madrid were getting battered. I don't know how Sevilla didn't win that game in the end. So I was I was naturally worried because you know you know they, you know if if they do that to Real Madrid, what's going to happen with us? But uh, this control thing that you guys keep going on about that Arsenal don't play good football. I mean, we had. From when I checked the stats, we had 16 shots against Sevilla and an XG of 2.8. And the only concern that I have that I've noticed with, with the Arsenal games nowadays is that we're not clinical enough. Um, that game should have been 3-4-1 to Arsenal because Martinelli missed, in my opinion, a clear goal. And Odegaard pretty much missed. Oh. Stefan. Yeah. Stefan, well, can I talk to you there? Right. When I hear, like, and, 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 and Turk brings a good point in the sense that how Arsenal became successful last season, right? And it sounds great because you guys haven't dropped, you guys haven't lost, like we haven't lost. But it's different. It seemed like you guys were scoring goals and you guys were easily top five in chances created. Now it seems like Arteta is trying to find a different way. Is he trying to find a different way to win because it didn't work out by the end of the season? Yeah. Or, or is it like, like is he? It, it's weird because it's like, all right, you do what's best, what it's best for your team. All right, you guys fell short, but now this year's team it seems 
very oh, yeah perfect. i yeah honestly mar i suggest arsenal fans to go watch the first four or five games of arsenal last year and watch our games now if you watch the first four to five games we played leicester where we won four two but we were quite leicester had we gave them quite a lot of chances in that game even though we played really well going forward if you watch fulham against arsenal we won 2-1 in the last minute and it was a very tight game where fulham could have won that game based on the actual chances that they had and there was a ridiculous block by ben white what I like about Arteta is that he has realized that he needs to be more Man City than Liverpool, which by by what I mean is, is he needs to control the game. If you looked at Sevilla, apart from the El Nesri chance at the end of the first half, which wasn't really a high kind of a high percentage chance, it was a very difficult angle, he was on the run, so that's rarely a goal. They had pretty much no chances. I don't think I need to check this, but I don't think they had a shot on target in the second half. If we can, if we can continue to play games like this, even the actual Chelsea game, if you watch the second half, apart from the mistakes by by David Rea, which led to actual chances for Chelsea, they really didn't create much. But so, Stefan, hold on. Can I hold? Can I, can, I, can I just? Can I? Can wait, I wait, wait, let me just. No, because opinion, you're saying you're saying because you're saying. Apart from the mistakes by Rea, but yeah. isn't that your lack of control and Chelsea's no. better play that's forcing those errors on your goalie who no. shouldn't be in those situations? Still, still, those in terms of the error, for example, if you if you saw the actual Chelsea game, the the who who missed it? I think Palmer missed it where he he took it off. It was a poor pass from Rea. He was under no pressure whatsoever, so it was just. But, it pa was just, but Palmer was pressing. It, was, the it wasn't a good he? play from Chelsea. It was up. It was. It was a mistake from Arsenal more so than than, than good play for Chelsea. I don't know what Rayo was doing. He just he literally passed it to Palma. So for me, that formula in terms of creating games where we limit their actual chances is, in my opinion, a much better formula. For I'll give you one example, which is end to end, and in my opinion, it's not going to go well this season. If anybody watched the Borussia Dortmund Newcastle game, that was. That game in the first maybe 15, 20 minutes should have been 2-2 or something. But then after that, Newcastle were so open that Dortmund should have easily won that game in the end. And that type of formula where you play end-to-end, -end, I don't think it's as successful in the long run compared to the way Man City play. Like, for example, controlling possession, controlling everything. But if Saliba in, never got injured, you told us you would have won the league. So how does that in make my, sense? In my opinion, last yes. season you weren't controlled. Last season you were going for it. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but last season we were going for it, but it was more intense stuff. We were more intense. We were. Yeah, but you would have won the league team. if Saliba never got injured. So it's not about whether it's end to end yeah, or control. What I'm yeah, saying I, is, it was injuries that hurt you, not the style of play. So my question is, why is Arteta changing the style of play when that wasn't the problem? It was just because because, because because he feels that this style of play is more geared towards success, and I agree with him because if you look at the team that has been the best team probably in the world and in the Premier League for the last five, six years, they play like that. The moment they score one goal or make it one nil, you pretty much feel like the game is over because they just take over the game, they keep the ball, and they pass you to death. And so that is what Arteta is trying to recreate. He's trying to create another Man City, basically. But I... Man City don't do that. Man City are dominant. They score three goals, four goals. They're diff they Let me, do you know what? Let, let no. me let me get Jez and Connor's opinion on this, right? Then I'll come back to Mari and, and Ash Mate. That's right. Jez, Stefan's given the argument as to this new controlled way of playing is uh, is 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 better because that's what Man City do, and this is a better chance of success. Whereas I'm hearing a lot of criticism within your own club and from rivals saying this isn't the same Arsenal as last year, and <laughs> this isn't going to work. What 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 what's your take on it, Jez? How do you see it? Uh, yeah, I mean, let's get it right. Let's fact the table here, right? If, if that's the statement that we want to play like Man City, well, great. But we don't have the players of the level of Man City. Yeah? Let's, 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 yeah, let's not mess about. The fact is, last season, Arteta had a working team that were absolutely taking teams apart in the first 20 minutes. 
because we were playing quick, incisive football that teams didn't know what to do with. Now we are slow, ponderous, this absolute nonsensical thing, right, of having Zinchenko going inverted. He's out of position 80% of the time. Let's look at the facts of when we had Tierney, right, at left back. He was in position. He was going down that left flank. He was overlapping Martinelli. And he was servicing the team in the box. He was one of the only players, right, that could actually cross a bloody ball. Yeah, we are pretty crap at crossing a ball direct to a footballer in our actual own team. So I don't understand. Why do we need to cross the ball, Jess? Who are we? Who are we crossing the ball to? Who? That's a good point. Eddie Nketiah or great Jesus? Point. No, I, I agree with you, Stefan. That's a great point. I was. Yeah, I, I I totally agree with you on that one. We don't have we don't have the leading players that we need up front. And I've been calling for this, and so is you, Stefan, so is Connor, so probably ten thousand, twenty thousand other Arsenal fans. We need an out and out striker. Jesus is good, but he's not going to get you twenty five goals a season. Enketia. 30 starts, 30 starts, two goals, two bloody goals. Really? That low? That's yes. That's it. Yes. That that's low. It. I didn't know it was that bad. Okay. I didn't know goals. that. I didn't know that. Two hmm. sodding goals, 100 bags a week, right? Not going to get into the shirt story because that's a different subject. But at the end of the day, I totally agree with you, Stefan. Tierney. Probably one of the best ball crossers we had last season, and we just weren't given the we just weren't given it, right? But the fact is, we are so lacking this season in our diversity. Our I mean, we're slow, we're boring. I mean, against Spurs, right? That game against Spurs at the Emirates, it was a bore fest from Arsenal. It was a bore fest, and it I was quite a enjoyed it. <laughs> It was the same against Chelsea, right? Because at the end of the day, it was just backwards, sideways, backwards, sideways. And the thing, the problem we've got, yeah, the problem we've got here, for five seasons, we had a player in Granite Xhaka, okay? Backwards, sideways, backwards, sideways, backwards. And one season, his last season, he was incisive, he was in a different position, and he caused disruption against other teams. I never wanted him. I actually berated that player for what he did to us Arsenal fans at Palace. Yeah, and I, I will never forgive a player for that sort of bullshit. But the fact is, it needs to change. We aren't going to win the Premier League. We're not going to win the Champions League because we don't have what we need up front. <clears throat> fact I'm look, you know, I'm I'm level headed. Yeah, I, I, I say what I see, and we don't have it. We don't have it. And I and I'll shut up because I've said my piece. No, no, listen, that's what it's all about. Um I, look, I, I do want to switch on to the Spurs game against uh Fulham that we played as well, because I wanted to cover both our games this week. And then I know Mari's got a whole load of topics to discuss, but I just wanted to get a brief kind of vibe of where we're at with the recent games. Um, so there's mixed emotions about the Seville game. Um, so for Fulham, um, Ashmatic, uh, we'll try and keep it brief because I know Mari's got a lot of topics to go through, but oh. what's your take on the Fulham game? How did you feel about it? Happy? A lot? A bit, bit, bit worried about certain aspects um, of the game? <clears throat> job done? Basically, I was about to say that. Job done because, you know, we, we were told that Fulham were going to be a, a banana skin. You know, don't write Fulham off. Um, some teams have dropped points against them, 10 men, you know. So that was in our heads and we, we got the job done. We proved a lot of people wrong. So for me, I was happy. Now also, there's a lot of fans that we still are kind of nervous because we know how we were prior to this. We normally drop points after a positive result. And the fact that we've gone on, the mentality to me seems right. The first 
I'd say, I would say 80 minutes. A lot of fans are saying 70 minutes. I watched the game back and then I noticed that they registered their first shot on the 83rd minute. And when they registered that shot, our substitutions of Madison and Son was on the 80th minute. And they were trying to hit that diagonal all game. All game, they were trying to switch the play. They were trying to go down the middle. And they were just trying to do a quick transition, one, two passes. If it wasn't Willian, then it was um, Paulinho trying to do those diagonals. And if it wasn't him, it might be one of their centre-backs, maybe Ream trying to hit one at all. Sorry, Robertson, actually, the fullback. Robertson was trying to hit those switches of play. He was trying to bob up and down that left-hand side. And that's where they were trying to hurt us. But it wasn't coming off. They finally did get their chance. But the point with Fulham, they're toothless. So I was never really worried about them. I know Jimenez, after that head injury, he's just not been the same striker. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, he has a bit of concerns because they're like, oh, we can get got at. Do you know what I mean? As our, when you look at our depth, we're not quite there. But it's the first season. So listen, I'm here for vibes. I don't mind. I'm not going to be onto the manager and say, oh, my days, there's no depth. Blah, blah, blah. Like the guys just walked in. We're only nine games in. Like, it would be so crazy for me to jump on him at that point. So, like, like I said, the last eight, from 83rd minute, that's when they came into the game and grew into it. Um, Emerson Royal obviously had to cover on the left because the doggy was taken off. Defensively, I don't think he was too bad, but on the ball, I could just see, like, he just hasn't got it. He just ain't got it. Like, he literally just started running and then went, doo, 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 like a tape, you know, when he just runs out of film. That was Emerson Royal. <laughs> but uh, Richarlison, he ain't it. I'm sorry. Like, you need your strikers to bang. You need your forwards to bang. Um, I want him to work. Don't get twisted. But I can't be mad on that Ketia and say, oh, Ketia is dead. Or what's it called? Havertz is, bruv, he's paid how much money for Havertz. And then try to protect Richarlison. That makes no sense to me. Huh? Make it make sense. So for me, I'm saying, raw. if we've got a top three man and he's, been, he's meant to be our left-hand side, he's meant to be our striker, he's meant to be our wing forward, you've either got to supply the the front the front two or the other uh, wing forwards or the other midfielders, whoever's running onto the end of the, the balls, or you've got to score goals. You've got to at least hit the target. Second half, he hit into Rose there. I said, yeah, no, I'm done. I'm done. I can't, I can't back man no more. I can't back this one up. So, yeah, that's why I'm with that. I think Midfield wise were good. Hoiberg came on, he was pressing high. I thought certain times they weren't looking for him. He was open a couple of times, and I was thinking, right, oh, they might not, not like him. I think, oh, they might not like Hoiberg or something because certain times he was free and he just weren't giving it to him. I'm no fan of Hoiberg, by the way, but it is what it is. But yeah, generally, I'll wrap it up. Generally, I just thought we got the job done. Some were sensational. Madison was doing what Madison does. Player of the season, in my opinion. Um, the Suma. When he gets back, um, got two man of the matches for a reason. So, like, I, I want to see him as quickly as possible. I know that's another debate in itself, but yeah, I'll, I'll keep quiet from there because it's too much to unpack right now. I just, I just want to quickly say, you, I watched you guys on. I came, I, I guess, came on something always live with with Will. I'm gonna say you guys are fucking good. I, like, I know it's, I know you can say it's only Fulham, but I really, because I thought, you know what, let me sit down. I, I've, I watched, I, I have been watching snippets of Tottenham, but not actually a full proper full night. And I, I sat down and I thought, let me watch this. And I just looked at it and I thought, that is the football I wish we were playing this season. And it is. I'm glad <laughs> Stefan isn't here because Stefan, <laughs> Stefan would kick off if I said that. But it's he true. Is He's listening. I, it is, but that's the thing. I was watching it and I'm thinking, the attack, the the attacking press that you're giving, and the threat you're giving when you're going forward, and yes, you say it's only Fulham, but I'm basing it on what what I'm seeing. Our, our press is very good, actually. It is our just so is threatening, good. and we didn't mm. offer that. Whenever a team has the ball with Arsenal, either Jesus or Odegaard's running, but there's no threat. There's no oh, we got to move it. We got to move the ball. Arsenal are coming. There's not. There's nothing like that with us. When we when we're on the ball, there's threat. I I can, I can see that. When we're passing it around, teams are getting a bit oh, agitated, thinking, oh, what are we going to do now? But in terms of when we're trying to win the ball or pressing, there's nothing like that. And Tottenham are offering a lot like that. And just everything about it. Vicky, uh, Mickey van der Ven, Jesus Christ, what a centre-back you've got on your hands. I'm just saying, what a centre-back. And he's so young. like Absolute quality. And I'm Vicario. Mm. I put him into my FPL. <laughs> I put him into my FPL. Vicario Stop is... Uh, Stop I think, it. 
I think I've got to stop. I know. Listen, I know I'm saying. Connor's a yid. Connor's a yid. Listen, at the end of the day, I love football. And I'm not going to bullshit around. Jez is, Jez is about to lose the plot. <laughs> <laughs> Just because Arsenal is my team, I've got, when I see good football, I've got to give praise to it and just say it's good. But the one thing I will say is, and I think you guys already know this, if a injury comes your way to a major player, i.e. Son, Madison, exactly. just like us last season, yeah. I think that's when you could crumble. Like Just yeah. like us, when we lost, we had a perfect 11, but as soon as we lost one of that 11, it all went down. And it, it, that's why I keep saying it's a bit like a carbon copy of us last season with what you're doing right now. Murray, Murray, let me let, uh, let me ask you something related to what Connor said. <clears throat> so yeah. he said we look really good. Okay, now for me, as soon as Son and Madison came off, and it was a midfielder skipping high beer, and it was Ooh. Belize Johnson Nacelso. All, all I saw was Fulham beginning to get chances. Yep. And I saw us not have the same possession as before. So, did you see a massive drop off once we made the subs? And how how big of a drop off was it? If you if you if if that's what you saw, it is a massive drop off. Um, uh, uh, we'll start from the starting lineup, right? Basuma is not there. Hoiberg held his own. Horberg kind of plays different to Basuma, um, but he held his own. It's a drop off, but not, a, I won't say a devastating drop off, but you can tell that, hey, we're missing Basuma. And what Basuma does, Basuma uh, will, will attack the defender when he has the ball, he's great on the ball. You know, you, you, you see that. Then you go to the uh, forward line. Once Sonny goes off, you just got to pray who's going to be clinical to score a goal, right? Because, and we'll get to this, we'll get to Kulu and, we'll, and Odegaard, but, you know, he missed a chance to a point that he didn't get a shot. You got Richardson kicking field goals like he's an NFL uh, um, uh, kicker. I, I mean, he was way off the target, like he was kicking the uh, kicking the field goal, and then you know you see the huge, massive drop off. You see it, you see it, and so our starting eleven is our starting eleven. But as soon as a point player gets injured, and I'm not including Kulu and Richardson because they didn't start eleven. I'm talking about Son, Madison, Basuma. Benven and Romero, where we're, we're in deep, deep, deep trouble. And the goalie, Murray. The goalie saved us twice. And, and, for the, and, he, made, and, he made a wonder yeah, save. That, that game, wonder save in the first half. Yeah, that, that has, yeah. Has, Ricardo has grown. ESPN FC, who always hate on Spurs, I call it anti Spurs channel. They were giving Vicario his flowers, saying, yo, Vicario is growing. He's, each week he's grown to his own, he's, he's doing stuff. My only, um, the only hope I see coming in, which sounds weird because Sar has been playing great. He has a great engine. It's just that in the final third, the, the passing was where this is where Bentacore, Bentacore will make our midfield even better. Murray, Murray, at the start, after like three, four games, I said that Madison, Basuma, and Bentancourt in this system will be in the top two, three midfields in the country, and people laughed at me. And I'm and I stick by that. I honestly no, I, think I'm, I'm name you. me a name me a better three other than Man City's and Arsenal's where we can argue who's got the best. Other than that, yeah. I don't think Liverpool's better. I don't think Chelsea's no. better. I don't think no. Newcastle's wait, but still, but Chelsea, I know Chelsea, you guys know how down I am on Chelsea, but thinking can Lavia, Caicedo, and Enzo. I mean, if that isn't good, then I don't know. It is, but like, I'm talking about. We need about to see it. We need to yeah. see it because we because Madison it. and Basuma. Are, so go, on, Nash. Go, on, Nash. No, no, no. I was gonna say attacking wise fluidity because I know we're gonna get Villas, into that. guys. I, I know we're gonna get into fluidity in a minute, but I'm just saying in terms of like attacking intent. Yes, hard working. Yes, 
winning the ball back. Yes, engines. Like, yes, that's what you want when your midfield is to cover the, every blade of grass up and down. Give it to the, the front two, the front three, or the force nines or force eights, whatever you want to call them. They are really good at what they do. But in terms of attacking, like, in terms of, like, I think one of the hardest things to do as a footballer is to assist. Obviously, putting the ball back in the net is a hard thing. But I think having the creativity to see something before it actually formulate, to have a picture like Picasso, Michelangelo, Luigi, you know what I'm saying? To, like Madison can see something before it happens and he could be two or three positions down in midfield and think, oh, hang on, let me just put the weight of pass onto that player right there. And then all of a sudden, no one in the crowd saw it, but he saw it. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure I could say the same with a, a Casado or a Latvia. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's not in there in there in their locker, but it's yeah, I don't who, know. Who, who are who are the creative talents in the midfield for, for Chelsea? Probably Fernandez. Palmer. Enzo, Palmer. Yeah. Palmer. Palmer. Palmer plays Palmer. Palmer further up. Yeah, when he plays, he like against Arsenal, what he did was he played as a false line where he would drop back and then Sterling and Mudrick would make runs. Palmer yeah, was, was really, kind of like really a, good against you, though, man. He looked yeah. really good. I, 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 I honestly think he played good because we played like crap. Like we gave him the actual space. Like I'm being honest. Like I really don't rate Chelsea. I thought we made them look. But do you think that's right? because they? Pre- you know, we discussed. Yeah, it. It, it, no, you're right. It's because they pressed. Because Gallagher, Gallagher, and and um. I mean, yeah, G- Gallagher two, played well. Gallagher, yeah. Gallagher, and um Palmer. Those were two pressing. They kind of. Gallagher's a potch player, man. He's a potch player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and he, you know, player. running around like a headless chicken and making him look good just shows how poor Arsenal played. And the other thing is. Poch has not lo- has not lost his uh, his spursiness, that's for sure. Because those two changes that he made, he totally oh. flipped the game and Change showed the, the whole game. That the, the, those two changes completely changed the game. Hey man, yeah. allow allow calling it spursness, man. He's at Chelsea now. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> call, it yeah, call it Poch. Call it call it Poch. Call it Poch. Why are you why are you why are you why are you coming at us for that? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. Like he's, he hasn't lost that gene where he snatches, uh, he snatches, a, you know, a draw, a, a draw from the actual jaws of victory because he totally removed the whole impetus. Because once they stopped having the counterattacking threat, Arsenal got much more of the ball. We made changes that were actually benefited us, and we, we managed that to actually score two goals. And then. In do, the end, do you know I thought, what, Stefan? Do you know what, Stefan? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little bit defensive of Poch. You're always defensive I, of Poch, but okay. <laughs> no, 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 because I haven't been defensive of him this season because I think he's been playing a lot of players out of position. But now he's kind of found his team and they've found their groove. I don't oh. think any manager. Well, hear, hear me out. I don't oh. think any manager, Poch, Arteta, uh, Postacoglu, <coughs> coaches coaches their goalie to do what <laughs> Sanchez did in that game. That killed them, man. Because as soon as oh, that yeah. happened, you guys smelt no, blood, I, and you're no, not a rubbish team. Oh, it you, was more you know of a what? case. It, we can, for we me, can... for me personally, it was more of a case of I didn't think Arsenal and even the fans. We didn't expect Chelsea to be that good. Yeah, I when, agree. when we arrived, we didn't expect them but to. Chelsea come out told you their fans were saying you're well, all right, and I, us I, off. I think, you're all underestimated. I think, they was. I, I heard them all week on all the channels saying. A draw. They all said a draw, and you're all like, "Nah, nah, nah, you're rubbish." So they knew something. Yeah, but yeah, no, I think I think the fact that it's been, it was so long since they've last beaten us. I think yeah. it was six and six and eight or six and seven or something like that uh, wins. Uh, so I think that was part of it. And then you could see in the second half where we're like, right, just like the severe game, we've now got to turn it up a level. It went up, but I I've, I said this as soon as he arrived at the club. Robert Sanchez is nowhere. I'd have kept Kepper. Robert Sanchez. No. Connor, nowhere near. Oh, really? No, nowhere near. Nowhere near. He's so he bad, man. He's so shit. Kepa's just as bad. I'd take Kepa over Sanchez. Really? <laughs> like, like, no, both are terrible. Don't get me wrong. The fact that they signed, let's be honest, Brighton's third keeper, because he was when they signed him, mm. was hilarious to me. But in my opinion, if I'm Chelsea, and and I think it's, it's just a foregone conclusion now, I'm going to go all out for Ramsdale. And if I I'm not. Close, I not. yeah, I just think it's it's over for Ramsdale because we we, we all see how uh, Arteta is is backing Raya, and I just think he's gonna be sold. So are you against, are you against Raya, Stefan? Hmm? Are you against Raya? 
at the moment. I'm not. I'm not against Raya. I, I I have been defensive of him in terms of I think Arsenal fans have been a, a, a bit harsh, I even agree. though I, I I do think he has been dodgy. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. But if you, for example, the Man City game, people said he had a bad game. I don't think so. Yes, in the first 15 minutes he was nervy, but I thought in the last 15, yeah. 20 minutes yeah. he was the main reason why one of the main reasons why we controlled the game so well. He was brilliant in those 15, 20 minutes. So. <laughs> In my opinion, I can see the little things that I can see, the potential in terms of the way he plays with the ball. He's just better at Ramsdale in the system that we want to play. And Chelsea are nuts. And if they offer 60 to 65 million, which I will yeah, which I will be wanting for Ramsdale, I'm, I'm gonna take it because 65 that, million for Ramsdale. Yes, you know, he's, 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 he's 24, he's 24, English he's English, he's English. English. And he's and he's potentially England's number one. So 100. percent If they're gonna pay 40 million for Cole Palmer, I'm sorry. I want another at least 15 to 20 million above that. Oh, and you know what, ridiculous. guys? To think about it logically. We can use that 65 million and either sign Tony or Pedro Neto. Can I? Can I just say, oh, right? I Spurs? Spurs signed Vicario for 17 million. Okay. Now, oh, no, when no. we didn't get Raya, no. I was cussing. No. I was cursing. What a joke. How have we not signed him? And then this Vicario come in. I said, I don't know anything about him. Apparently, he was the second best goal in Italy last year, but he's got no experience in Premier League. Listen, I am happy to take it any direction anyone wants to give it to me. No. I was so wrong. I was so stupid in what, what I said. Do For 17 million. No, no, I'm, I'm serious. For 17 million, mm -hmm. he has got to be an absolute bargain that we've signed. What is so wait, far? Stop. He's, yeah. he's 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 proved for 17 million. Just just think about the price for 17 million. We are getting more than our money's worth for the price. If he was 50 million, games. maybe you could have, what if he what nice. if he's crap? What if he's crap in like the next 10 15 games? Yeah, but I'm going I'm going by what I've seen so far, Stefan. I don't know what's gonna happen next. Yeah. So far, yeah, okay. like, it's, been, it's awesome. been a brilliant signing. Who's the last? Who was the last? <laughs> Easy Connor. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the last? And I'm going to come to Connor in a minute. Okay. Who's the last English goalkeeper that was sold for over sixty million pounds? English there, goalie. There, there, there hasn't been a big time goalie sale like English goalie, apart from Pickford, who I think was sold for 30, 35, English I think, goalie. for Everton. That's my point. Yeah, but, yeah, but that was seven Ramsdale, years ago, Jez. Ramsdale would not get sold for probably more than 30 to 35 million what? we bought him for 30 million jazz has his value not increased tell me well, how no he, well, no he's benched oh it's the, you're telling me his value from sheffield united when we bought him for 30 million in these next two years has not increased where he's he plays for england come on guys but he's but he's, least, but, but, but he's but he's a b choice player now I mean, he's. he's no, I, I wouldn't. I'm I wouldn't serious. Go that, he's a big. Talk facts. Talk facts, my friend. Who was the last English goalkeeper or any international goalkeeper? Yeah, but that's not that facts. Sold Sixty-five million pounds. It's but that's not facts yeah. because there's yeah. a lack of there, there's there's a lack of context because there hasn't been a big money go English goalie signing from right. any of the big clubs. The last big money one was seven years ago and that was Pickford. That's seven years ago. And he was 30 million due to inflation and all of the other things. For example, I'm gonna charge high a higher price naturally because we're selling to Chelsea. So I want another five to ten million over. And, and yeah, that, can, I, can, I, can I can I can I say as well Chelsea can't keep spending this big money because if, um, to get it. The fact yeah I, I hear what you're telling me right now here but you have to go with the market valuation. The mar I looked at it today, right? The market valuation for Aaron Ramsdale is 27 million. That's that his valuation. We Chelsea, are, Chelsea are a very shrewd so, club. Okay. No, they're, they're not. They're not no, going to spend not. 65 million on a bench warmer, right? <laughs> Let's get it right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, so wait, so wait, so Jez, so you're saying 27, so you're saying currently Aaron Ramsdale is pretty much the same value as Sanchez that they signed for 25 million. Are you serious, Jez? I'm no, Sanchez is worth less. 
No, Sanchez is paying him fifteen million. Sanchez is five million. They yeah, but his price, yeah, but Sanchez's price must have gone down now. Still, his price is the price they paid for him, which is twenty five million. So that's how much he's worth. I don't, I don't want these. You know, Vicario, you signed him for seventeen. Is he worth seventeen million still? No, because he's in, in your exactly in your. Exactly. But your goalie but, sits on the bench. He's not good enough. He is. No, that's he's not, not the case, though. That's that's case. Why is he on the he, bench? He started. He started the season. He started the season. They dropped him. He just David he Raya has been in the Premier League. Tell yeah, but me, that, David David Raya. Every game I see him, he kicks the ball to a striker and you get away with it. Last night, in the last minute, he punched it and it went over your bar. Luckily, yet oh, Ramsdale, yeah. yet, yet, yet Ramsdale doesn't get a look in. That means Ramsdale must be that much worse than him. It's, it's, it's down to the unfair arrogance, still. It's literally down to the arrogance. And you know what? And, and I said when he'd come in, because obviously we've got a load, we've got an obligation to buy him. We are getting him at the end of the season, right? So that's why an obligation. It, it is it's an obligation. An no, no, it's an obligation. We've got a, we have to. We can't no, buy anyone. Check. It's an option. Okay, Get your cool. facts right. Before cool. you whatever, talk. whatever you say. Whatever you say. Okay. Um, so, I, I said this when uh, Raya joined. When I saw first thing Spanish, I knew for a fact he was never going to be dropped. This is going to be Arteta's wingman, never going to be dropped. But as I stand currently, I see currently we've got two good goalkeepers in our squad right now. So if if say for example Sheffield United Ramsdale starts, I'd be like, all right. If Raya starts, I'd be like, all right. I'm not that bothered. However, I wouldn't say because Ramsdale. I have to say stuff because Ramsdale is our second choice goalkeeper at the moment. Instantly makes him shit. I, I don't agree with that. It makes him bad. No, 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 but tell me uh, another team that has the quality of those two keepers overall. There's not another. There, I would argue there's not another team in Europe that has the same the level of goalkeepers. The two goalkeepers because we have two number one goalkeepers potentially that that that, that are actually playing. So <laughs> yes, I'm trying to think of a club. Um, there's no club. You guys can't because that that's what the situation is not. It's rarely repeated at clubs where you have two number one goalkeepers, pretty much. There, Real Madrid doesn't have it. Barcelona doesn't have it. It used to have it with Bravo and with Terst again, but they sold Bravo. Yeah. Uh, Man United, you could argue, no, Man United doesn't have it because they signed the uh, Turkish goalkeeper, but he's definitely a... a have Arsenal, have Arsenal has, has Arteta created a problem here? Yes. When, need, when, when, yeah. when, when you didn't need to create one. Why? Yes. Why? 100%. It's, it's the perfect... I think it's the perfect solution because you have a goalkeeper who has a loan option to buy. So if he doesn't yeah. do well for Arsenal, and then if he doesn't do well for Arsenal, and then, and then Arsenal doesn't rate him, they don't need to sign him. They don't pay the actual 30 million. Fine. What's Ortega. the deal? Yeah, Ortega and Edison. That's a shout. Yeah, and Edison. That's not bad. It was a good goal. Ortega, Ortega, guys, Ortega came serious? in the other day. Ortega came in the other day. Man, Man City lost. Because Ederson was injured. Yeah. So what's the point of having Ortega? When has, when wait, comes in, when you has lose? Ortega ever displaced Ederson apart from in the League Cup games where he plays him? Because no, you, you're, missing, you're missing my point. I, I said... Are you guys serious? Asked, yeah. no, no, so hold on, Stefan. I, I asked a question. Has Arteta created a problem here that didn't need to be created? Yes. And then Michael in the comments put, yeah, but look at uh, Man City, Ederson and Ortega. And my response to that is, but Ortega came on and flopped the other day. So he's, I don't he get saw, it. No, in my opinion, he saw... A situation where he could get a goalkeeper that was of extremely that was in the top three goalkeepers last year in the league that suits our system better. And again, yeah. Connor with his anti Arteta agenda that it's some Spanish thing. If Connor remembers when we tried to sign a goalkeeper before we signed Ramsdale, our number one priority was David Rea. We just couldn't sign him. So we guys really is is Ram is Rea better than Ramsdale? That's in, my in, in my opinion, yes. In my in my opinion, he's a better goalkeeper. The stats prove it if you look at the stats. And the second part is he's more suited, and most importantly, he is more suited to the system than Ramsdale. Well, playing at the back. Playing yeah. the back. Yeah, for sure. Is he not getting lucky? Because every game, I swear to God, he gives it to someone and he gets away. I agree. Still, I agree with you. He's looked much shaky. So those, like stats, so those stats aren't a true reflection of what is actually happening. I think it's very... Okay, but, well then, still, the stats that show Romero is a better defender than Saliva are not a true reflection of no, what No, because I we used that. 150 stats, not one. Oh, okay. like well, I used. I also used well, a use number of simple stats. but Simple, yeah. No, no. no I want to get to this question. 
I'm, I'm and, of course, uh, and it was a big topic with Arsenal fans against Chelsea and even against Sevilla. And this other player is a big question with us. And this question is, what is what's wrong with Kulu and Odegaard? Um, Kulu? Yeah, what's wrong with Kulu? Yeah, with Kulu and Odegaard. Um, Spurs, some Spurs fans are questioning Kulu. I, I did, they, did they watch the Fulham game? He was very no, good. Well, no, well, see, this is Stefan. So I'll go first because I brought in Kulu. Right now, right, there is Spurs fans. I'm one of them who are frustrated with Kulu in the sense of, yes, his work rate is amazing, right? Almost in the sense of he's playing like a right back, you know, he's getting the ball, he's progressing it. But in the final third this season, and I've done the watch alongs with Will, where we've been talking about his processing in the final third is atrocious. I.e., example, Romero laid a beautiful pass at the end of the first half for him. I don't think he's scoring a goal there. Doesn't even get the shot off because he's undecisive. His processing is slow. And Ange goes like this, like, oh, I cannot believe it. And I've seen it too many times this season uh, from Kulu. And I'm just like, you know, wow. some people call him predictable. Some people call him wasteful. And, yes, I'm going hard on Richardson, but I'm also going to go hard on Kulu. Kulu has to do better. What's going on with Kulu, you know? On the other end, Odegaard. You have some Arsenal fans and and and, and neutrals call him Nodegaard because he doesn't show up in big games. So I don't know if you guys heard the nickname Nodegaard. So I posed the question: What with Kulu and Nodegaard, Odegaard? One word. One word. Inconsistency. Simple. That's that's exactly how I describe it. Inconsistency. In inconsistency. Yes, Stefan, inconsistency. Oh, man, it's just... I just well, what is it then, Stefan? What is it? What is it for Odegaard this season? It's confidence, man. Inconsistency. He's been last year, how many last year he, he scored the most goals. He's like, your you club talking about it. It's captain. Confidence. He's the captain of all seasons. seasons. Yeah, the, why is he the captain if he's got no confidence? He's going through a bad run of form. Right so that's now. inconsistency. That's inconsistency. That so last absolutely. season, he was... Yeah. But I'm sorry, I have to tell you this. I'm sorry. That is nonsense. This guy has been Arsenal captain for two seasons, right? How on earth can he be lacking confidence? This guy is not the level that he should be, right? He, he's, an, he's an average player. He's not world Sorry. class, right? He strolls around. He goes missing against the big teams. He did it against Spurs. He did it against Man City. He did it against Chelsea. And he okay. did it the other night against Seville. Against right? He's not the level that he should be. When you've been at this club, well, captain for two years. Two years. Right? He's on loan for one season and we bought him. At an overinflated price, how is he lacking confidence? He doesn't talk to his players. I mean, I was, I was on a, sh a stream earlier, right? Okay, classic Stefan, classic point, right? In that game against Seville, right? The referee interrupted play on Seville's behalf, so he had to, by the letter of the law of the game, give a drop ball. Yeah, who went and questioned the referee? Declan Rice. Six yards away was Martin Udegaard, just stood there with his back the whole. Season. He wasn't interested. Now we all know the referee's not going to change his decision, but the fact is Declan Rice showed ambition of going up to the referee and saying, "Come on, man." You know, he's probably put it in his face and said, it was your bloody fault. You got in the way. Why are you punishing us? That is what captains do. You don't just stand there, right, 
and just like, oh, yeah, okay, fair enough. Cheers, ref. Nice one. <laughs> yeah, that is not a football captain. This guy, Stefan, is not the levels of being an Arsenal captain. He never talks to his team. He turns up in about one in every five games. He'll probably turn up on Saturday because we're playing Sheffield United, right? And that's that his levels. That is his levels. Okay. So this this concept that he doesn't turn up in big games is another myth. He he, he turned he up last season. This season, I, I agree with you. He hasn't been on form. But last season, he turned up against Liverpool at home. He turned up against Man United at home. He turned up against Man United away. He turned up against Spurs uh, away. He turned up. Where was he the last eight games of the season when it was? I'm more talking about this season when I'm talking. I I think Jez is as well, Stefan. Okay. This season, this season, I would say the first few games he was good. Then then I would say, I I think, in my opinion, where his confidence has dropped is ever since the first international break where it was obvious that Norway were not qualifying for the World Cup or the, the Euro, sorry. What's Norway going I to think ever, ever, since, ever since he came back from the first uh, international break, which was, I think, the Spurs game right after that, he, I don't know what has happened. He hasn't been kind of the same player. I agree with Jess. I think he needs – I agree that he needs more bite. In my opinion, he needs more physicality. He does – guys. Two, two, two questions on this, right? Number one, Mesa Ozil, he, love him, hate him, that guy showed up for you, right? Mesa Ozil showed up for you guys. Where did he um, show up, still? Yeah. I'm not too sure about that one, still. Yeah. Re- well, let's relax. You, you, want, you, want a, you want a couple of FA Cups with him, though? Yeah, yeah, but that, that wasn't that wasn't only right. Mesut Ozil, so. especially towards no. the end of Mesut Ozil at Arsenal. That's when it really and, and still and still yeah, forget the end. Still, but every... in his in his peak in his peak at Arsenal, let me finish my point. In his peak yeah. at Arsenal, then I rephrase it. In his peak at Arsenal, I thought the guy showed up for you lot. The end yeah. was the end. The other thing I'll say is, it's more of a question: Is this new controlled way of playing football hindering players like Odegaard? I don't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah I agree. So that's on your manager then. Well, if you look at it, just look at the difference between last season and this season. The final because we're now playing controlled football. Look at the difference from Odegaard this season to Odegaard last season. Oh my god, now he's gonna find another reason to shit on our I'm not oh shitting. Oh, I'm god. not sh- Stefan, I'm oh, sorry that you're on the toy boy and you've got a now it's an opportunity. Listen, I'm sorry that you got to defend Arteta, but, but Arteta doesn't always get things right, Stefan. So no, I don't defend Arteta. I just think your points of criticism for Arteta are ridiculous. Well, look like, at the difference in player from this season to last season. It's look at the oh, difference. So that's, look at how much he's in bad form. Look at the form. difference in players. Look at the difference in players this season compared players, to players. Tell me, t- t- tell me which players are in bad look form. Martinelli. Look what, at our attack and options. Our attack and options are nothing. They they were, they're playing nothing like they were last season. So don't give me bullshit about how you're playing, our you're playing to, nothing. Of Arteta. Yeah. We have scored almost the same amount of goals at the same stage of the season as last season. We have conceded less chances. We have more possession. We have less chances conceded. Do you, I don't know do you what see you read and what you watch, but it's very wrong. Season. So you see better football being played right now. They're like us last season. <laughs> what, does, what, does, what does that mean? What does, what does better football mean? Do, do you want to play – if you want to play end-to-end football – did that succeed in winning us the league? Because we had games against Bournemouth where we had to win in the last seconds. We screwed up against Southampton because we, we kept going forward and they caught us on the break. Hold on. So, this is, Stefan, this is bullshit, right? I'm sorry, right? Yeah. I yeah, was told, no, 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 no. Let me, no, 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 no. Hear me oh. out. This, 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 see, this is where I'm going to defend Connor now, right? Of course you're going to defend Last Connor. Se- no, I'm going to defend him because I'm going to apply some logic to this, okay? They're not allow you to counter it. Last okay. season, all I heard from every Arsenal fan I know was the reason you lost the league was because you lost Saliba and a couple of injuries. The only reason Arsenal lost the league was because you didn't have squad depth. Injuries and squad yeah. depth. Now, because Arteta or because the media have pushed out this controlled way of playing football... You're now using it as a reason as to why you lost last year. Why didn't you say last year the no, reason we lost the league? One minute, the reason we lost the league is because we didn't control games, it's because we didn't have control of football. But now that he's changed the system, you're saying, Oh, that's the reason last year. This is why I'm calling it out because this is what I heard last year. 
again, Stel, the, this is yeah. this is the problem that you have. You create a narrative in your head. No, you've you created, created it. Oh, you've created no, it. Stel, 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 I'm Stel, out. Stel, no, 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 Stel, no, no, Stel, 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 I I said, I said, I said, the main reason why we lost the lead was because we lost Saliba. Yes, because the fact that Rob Holding can't even. Start for Crystal Palace. So that you shows just you mentioned the, level. the Southampton game when Saliba wait, was injured, dude. And wait, these games okay, you, you lost okay, points wait, because you let, had injuries. Okay, let me let me answer. I said I didn't say that it's better and that we would have that this is more that we that we would have won the league last year if we had played more controlled. I said that this type of system, in my opinion, from watching Man City and from watching the teams that were good, the this type of system is more geared towards success because it reduces the chances that you have at conceding at conceding goals in general and you could see it we are way more solid defensively than we were last year we are way more solid if you if you eat every i think like where he's tried to go too defensive because of him pushing forward too much i feel like it's gone the other way if that makes sense so you've gone from one extreme from like all out attacking and now what he's done, he's got Jorginho quite, I wouldn't say he's a creative midfielder. I'd say he's more defensive. defensive yeah. You've got a defensive body on the pitch yeah. with a rice. I don't think he's really creative. He's a good footballer. He's tidy. Don't get me wrong. But I don't think he's a creative kind of eight. And then they're meant to be supplying the balls to Odegaard. Do you see what I'm trying to say? And now you've got Zinchenko inverting as well and then i think he's tweaked the tactics and that's the reason why you're more solid yes but that's come at a cost in my opinion from what i'm watching and that's why a lot of arsenal fans are like this is boring this is a snooze fest and i'm like when does that catch up when does the results or not when does the performance shall i say catch up with the results because we saw it under conte like yeah we were getting wins Gonna... But we weren't performing right. And we're like, oh, yeah, we're winning, but we don't feel like it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same type of film, if that makes sense. I'm yeah, looking at yeah. our right now. And he's tweaking. He's tweaking in the season. And the reason why he's tweaking was because, like you said before, I've been listening, it wasn't too solid. They wasn't defensively there. So I think where he's tried to put strict, because it feels like, for me, when I'm watching, it looks like all the guards got strings on his back. So he can't move and be as free as he wants. If that makes sense, he has to stay in the system. If you're a system player, you have to stay in your zone. You can't move out your zone. And if he's not getting fed, then how can he feed the other players? And I agree with Jez in terms of like, he doesn't show for it. If you're attacking mid and you're the captain, mm -hmm. energy, brother, I want it. Like, if I'm kicking ball, a man needs to show for it. And if a man shows for it, then I know, right, he wants it. He wants the ball. Just for his aura, his energy, his body language, how he's looking at me, how he's interacting. Is he side on? Is he ready to receive the ball? And Odegaard last season, really good at scanning the pitch, looking where players where, where players are, but he knows where to position himself. This season, a shadow of himself. And I feel like it's affecting the rest of the team I'm, as well. Because I'm, I'm, if the captain's not showing up and he's not being like, like pumping his chest out, then what can we expect for the rest of it? That's why Rice is like, what's going on here? Like, do you know what I mean? I'm moving attacking midfielder, but I think I need to do something. And I felt like that last season was more box to box, like attacking that box, arriving in that box more than Rice is. I think Rice is sitting back a lot more, more involved in the build up. And that build up is very tidy, as I said before, sideways, backwards, sideways. And you have a lot of possession. And yes, you do create chances, but it's the, the, the style of chances for me aren't ones that trouble teams or give teams real problems or, or give them something to think about. They know like Arsenal are going to be very central. They're not going to mm. hug the whip. They're not going to open up and be expansive. They're quite narrow. So that's how I see it. I could be wrong. I'm a Spurs fan. You see it more than me. But that's how I, I that's the no. reason why I think the the, 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 the the results, not the results, the performance, I keep saying results, the performance is, is, is below par from what I see. Do you know what I mean? Whereas if I look at Spurs, I feel like, Madison, like Angela said to Madison, look, I want you to be creative. Like, do you? And really? as long as that person, as long as someone comes into his position, it's all gravy, it's all good. Because we're seeing fullbacks play like attacking eights. We're seeing mm -hmm. Udogi in the eight position. You're seeing Poro in the attacking eight position. And that 
to me, to me, that's more fluid. But to answer Mari's question real quick before Steph jumps in. Cool. Me, yes. me, <laughs> yeah. my broski, look, he He's been good. is lacking yeah. confidence because in that final third, he's taken too long to make that decision. A simple pass or yes. a simple shot. He's not putting his foot through it like he was. You could just tell that he's just not 100. That like no one doubts his ability. The kid's got ability. What he does with the ball, what he does off the ball, how he holds up the play, how he's our out ball. Like when we're going long, we don't go long too much because that's not really anti star But when we do go long and we decide to go direct, Kulu is our guy. He's our guy that when you give the ball, his first touch is brilliant. He looks off the ball, does it well. There might be one or two players on him. It doesn't matter. He can transition outside that right hand side, and he he comes out and sometimes he inverts and comes in and goes across. Not always the best option. He's got a right foot. I don't know why he doesn't go outside a lot more, but he just doesn't trust it as much as his left, which makes him. I think a lot of fans are saying, "Oh, he's predictable because he, he, he's always dribbling with his left foot. That's his dribble foot, if that makes sense." So that's that's all it is with Kulu for me. Like Kulu. I think when he gets a run of games where it's just going right for him, then you'll see a different guy. But I honestly think when we saw our left-hand side out, the right-hand side, whoever that competition is, that will help Kulu because Kulu needs to be dropped a couple games to say, like, raw, I need to step my level up. I need to step my game up. You That's know right. what I mean? Can I, can That's what I'm I, saying. Can I, can I, can I say, for me, the best I've seen our front three in terms of the way we move and the way we, 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 we looked like we were going to be a menace was when Kulu... Um, Son and Johnson played in the front three against Arsenal. I Ooh, thought we looked like the right menace. And then once Johnson went off injured, we lost that spark. But I've uh, listen, I'm not, by chance, it's the only time them three have played. It was against Arsenal. Oh, never Arsenal. It. oh yeah, sorry. When yeah. Kelly so was on the right and Johnson was on the left. Sorry, yeah. my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I no, you're right. That worked. I right. That it worked was... a lot more. And I think you're right. I think you got a good point there. I think uh, that's what I said. I think a big problem with, with our front three is. <clears throat> If one of them isn't performing, sometimes on that on the one side, the other one down tools, if that makes sense. So it's competition on the pitch as well. So if one if our left side is firing, that helps Kulu to think, right, I got my game. A bit like you know how Walker pushed Danny Rose. Do you know what I'm saying? And then as soon as Walker went, Rose was kind of he wasn't quite the same yeah. fullback opinion. Right, I feel let, like... let, me, let me let me ask a question then, right? Let me ask a question, right? Not to the level of Conte, because and Jose, where the argument against him was the shackles are on. He's, he's holding them back too much. Do you think this season that Arteta maybe he's holding back some of your players a bit too much and it's affecting them, especially Odegaard? Do you think that's a possibility or or, or, or is that a no? I mean, which with like the only player that I think is out of form currently is is Odegaard. Like, well, I'm asking has... if Arteta's way is holding them back. Let me get Jeff's response first. Let me get Jeff's response. Yeah, let's go to Jeff's first question. Well, I, I, I come back to me, guys. I'm just working something out here because there was a statement made um, that, uh, yeah, no, I'll answer it now. You know, I, 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 I always work in facts. I always work in facts. That's my fact basis. Somebody made the statement we've scored the most amount, same amount of game goals as we did at this point last season. Bullshit. Close. I said close to the same amount of goals. Basically, yeah, we did. did. This time last season, no, in the Premier course. League, let's just speak, guys. Let's just speak. Let's just speak. In the Premier League, in the Premier League, we scored twenty-seven goals. Twenty-seven goals. Yeah. Facts. So, you know, if if I, I think if people want to argument facts, get your facts right, because at this point in time, we haven't scored any. We've got thirteen. We've scored 13 goals. 18. Right. 18, we've 18, 18, 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. We've scored 18, I think. There's still, still nine, nine, nine less. Still, nine less. Nine about, goals is a lot different. So. Talking about the Premier League. Eight, sorry. Yeah, you are right. 18 against 27. Okay. I need to... So, where's the argument of who, what team was better? And, and, and we'd, we, we had lost to Man United. Yeah, and why did we lose to Man United? Do you guys remember that game? It's got nothing to do with it, Steph. Because you played a high line, and uh, it's no, it's because it's because we went, and, we went all out attack in that game, huh? and and it was crap substitutions and tactics by Mikel Arteta. 
yes, he went he went to attacking, which exposed us even more. And then they they got us on the on the counter attack, which in terms of which which happened in a number of games, if you guys remember, which happened against uh, which happened against Southampton, which happened against Bournemouth. Even though we won that game, let's be honest, we scored in the last minute, but we were lucky because Bournemouth got us on the counter numerous times and could have, you know, could have scored. You can't argue against facts and stats. The, 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 only, the only fact that you have is we've scored more goals last season than we have this season. We have conceded less goals. We have more possession. We play much more in the opponent's final third. What was your league well, position? The other stats the can bring in other facts. Less goals. Conceded. I, oh, do you know what? I've just been having a look because I'm not statistician. I, I'm nothing like Will because I know Will is fantastic at it. And I think Stefan really knows his stats as well. I'm not taking that away from him. I'm not a statistician. But I just went through. I've just been having a scroll through. The sh our shot ratio and our passing from our exact same games that we are at this point from last season. Well, practically from the 9th of October. And I just look at the difference we've had. Like I look at the Aston Villa game from last season, 22 against four shots from Aston Villa. When we played you guys last season, when it was 3-1, absolutely smashed you out of the park. The list goes on from before that, from the Crystal Palace game, the Leicester game, the 4-2. I just read it there and I, then I look at how we're playing the season. It is just chalk and cheese. And yeah, I don't think whatever our do, Arteta is doing to change it is working. Listen, listen, I know we're unbeaten. We're in a title race, which I'm very happy about. I want to win. I want to win the league this season from the way it ended last season. That's what I want this season. Then that's what I, I think. The, I thought the aim should be as soon as the season ended last season. Arteta should be like, right, bang, we're going to do it again, a race, but we're actually going to win it. It's, it something just feels off. And when I do watch the likes of Arsenal this season, and I and I and I watch players like Odegaard, even like Saka this season as well, I don't know what it is, but it feels like we're so much more locked off than we are. As a neutral, this is what I'm asking you guys. Has our manager changed it? Our winners have been knocked off a lot more this season because last season, Martinelli and Saka, as we know, they had a fantastic season, fantastic season, and they were beating fullbacks left, right, and center. And now you realize every single game you play, especially in the league, they are always locked off by two players. Two players are always marking them, and. I don't know where we're trying to find ways to sort of figure it out. I don't know, but I just, I, I don't feel that we're playing much more threatening football like we were last season. It just doesn't feel like I, I personally don't feel confident that we can stick that in the position we are now can go forward and actually win it. I just, I just don't with the likes of Liverpool, Tottenham and City around us. Yes. Yeah, but wait, I just want to say, but, Again, the missing key thing is context. Last year, nobody took us seriously, Connor. Nobody came in the first three to four months to Emirates Stadium playing with nine men behind the ball like Nottingham Forest did or Fulham did or any of We them. didn't. We didn't do that. No, no, we came no. at you. Well done, Stel. Did you win the well, game? Well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm challenging Talking what you said. It's not well done, Stel. Like it's, you've said something and I'm Emirates. proving it wrong. It's not well okay, done, still. But still, but still, but still, again, we can talk. We can talk moments in context. If Arsenal had put away their chance in the first thirty minutes, we would have won that game easily. Let's be honest, because but you if, didn't. It, but you didn't. Right, 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 right. but, but you can talk to me about how much you didn't come at us. If, but if Ray had never made that world class save chances. from Johnson, we would have scored another goal. And what? What's jo what Johnson? The, when it was the only thing that's a fact is the final score. If but and maybe mean, mean nothing. Okay, okay still, when it was one nil. Eddie and yeah. Ketia missed a one on one with the goalkeeper. And his it wasn't a one on one. He hit it from an angle. Chance. It wasn't one on one. He hit it from an angle. And Ricardo had it covered. Okay, okay, it was from. A, but the Gabriel Jesus chance, that should have been a goal. That's know. his fault. That's his fault. Okay, but I'm telling you that you can talk about this game as if you. But Raya, Raya made a one to save. Raya, Raya made a one to save. And that would have been At a goal. One so nil. We can't do At this. One oh, nil you have this to Arsenal. At I one nil to Arsenal. Stefan, you've changed the argument. You always do this. You made a comment how every team comes to your ground and sits back with nine bin behind the ball. Spurs yes. did not sit back. We came to Arsenal and we took the game to you. So don't give me that as an excuse. I'm not Where's happy. The, yeah, okay. Okay. Stefan, okay. Stefan, Stefan, sorry, Mari, quickly, very quickly. You guys can remember because this is this is perfect. Stel, Mari, uh, Ashmak, answer me this question. Did you feel more threatened this season playing us at the Emirates or last season playing us? 
Oh, last season. Thank you like, very much. Thank you very much. Context. Again, this is such a stupid argument. Of course, they felt more threatened last year because they played in the Conte system, which sat back, and Arsenal were going to go at them. Again, exactly. Like, Sitting back, stupid, which is what you're like, saying. Like, just which, a complete which, which is what you're talking argument. about. You're talking what? about not being so attacking. You're contradicting yes, in yourself. Terms of, in terms of... In terms of what were you worried about if you if you if you actually come to the Emirates? You're worried that you're gonna give us all the ball, we're gonna play, and you're only gonna play on no, the counter. No, 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 Stefan, no, that's not. I'm I'm worried we're not gonna give you a bloody game because we bend over every time we come. We came to Emirates this year, wrote the early patch and said, right, let's do something. And we did, we gave it a go. We gave it a right go. Okay, okay. I mean, okay, if 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 Arsenal were were scarier last season, yes. But another key fact that Arsenal fans forget: we've barely had our our top three attacking players fit all together playing. I think the game against Chelsea was the first game they actually played together since since the start of the season, in which Martinelli wasn't fully fit. His Seuss had traveled from fucking Bolivia or somewhere all of the way so he wasn't also excuses fully are crazy paid. man his excuse yeah are crazy. yeah so like of course and he had a poor he was awful against chelsea he was actually i don't know who was worse him or martinelli maybe maybe martinelli there was worse in the actual chelsea game. Stefan, Stefan, can i can i say something and this is why i think you're biased when we lost to biased. fulham i think you are when we lost no, to fulham in the carabao cup well, i think you are when mm. we lost to when we lost to fulham in the carabao cup Every single Spurs fan I know blamed Ange. We said, why the hell did this guy make nine changes in a cup game that took us to penalties? And even then, when we got to penalties, why the hell was Davinson Sanchez, who we then sold two weeks later, why was he allowed to take a freaking penalty and miss? That was all on Ange. We blame Ange. That's your fault, buddy, right? When you guys don't do well, oh, this guy's ill. Oh, the referee that. Oh, he's just got this goal. Oh, the grass wasn't cut. When are you going to actually say Arteta is to blame for that? No, Arteta, but but I can't I can't criticize exactly. Arteta at the moment. I can't. I can't. Yeah, I can't <laughs> because 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 how can you how can you criticize a manager? We are in all of the cups. We're undefeated in the league, and we're top of our Champions League group. I don't understand. Apart from the Chelsea and the Lons games, which were really poor. The Spurs game wasn't that good. Because you drew against 10-man Fulham. Because you drew against Spurs, whose manager's only been there two months. Because you got lucky against Chelsea. That's why. Stefan, are you an Arteta in? Yes, he is. He is. What? What? Are you Arteta in? He's an Arteta in, yeah. Are you Arteta in? No, no, no. You can be be a manager in, but criticize How can I not be Arteta in? Compared to where we were when he came in to now, why would you say can, like, can I just ask you this question? Right? Can, I just ask you, right? can I ask you this? Right? Tell me what Arteta has achieved at this football club. I'll tell you what, and it's, and I think it's it's much more than just the actual res- which the results will come. I I really do believe. But for me, what he has achieved was he took away the last, I would say, six to seven years of Wenger, that cultural decline that there was at the club, the softness, the uh, the kind of the Mesut Ozil era where he would purposely say he's injured before every tough away game. Every Arsenal fan you know, remembers this, where we would go to Palace away and lose 3-0. That type of softness, that type of selfish kind of culture that was at Arsenal. The, the, no, answer the question. What has yeah. he achieved? He hasn't. He's won. First of all, he's won an FA Cup, which Stella's no, laughing at. No, 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 no. That was Unai Emery's team, man. Come oh, on. That, that was Unai Emery's, Emery's team. team. Emery's team. I've told Unai you this. Unai Emery's team. Right, let's get the let's so, get the so wait. Are you seriously saying let's that if Unai Emery on the bloody table, right? I'm no, fed up. These, I'm those are your facts. Those he are my won facts. He won it. He right. won it. Unai wait, Villa, right? You see what he's doing, with Villa. Right, he won he, it. He, Unai Emery's team. Would he just? Was, I'm, I'm he, gonna. He just, asked. Hang on, let me finish, and you can have your say. He asked to build his team. He's taken four years 
Mm -hmm. All bloody years. Okay. Spent 700 nearly million pounds and won okay. F all. Okay. Nothing. If he doesn't win the Premier League, and I'm asking you this question yourself, right? I'm asking you. If he doesn't win the Premier League or the Champions League, he has to be sacked. No, I just, I think it's stupid. I think he what does not be sacked. I, I personally think because no, our squad. Fucking okay. idiot. Stefan, what's Stefan? It's a paper shot of Stefan. I'm just going to put an example. Wait, wait, let me. Stefan, no, seriously. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm going to put a genuine question here. Say, for example, right? So we haven't. We, when was the last time when they picked up 2020? So was it been three years? Listen, the, listen, the, listen. I'm, no, giving no, you I'm getting annoyed because the Spurs fans that haven't seen one Premier League title are laughing at this as if, like, this is like this should Stefan, be. Stefan, Stefan, listen. It, last time we were crying. Everyone crying. Everyone crying. Everyone crying. Everyone crying. <laughs> Everyone crying. Stefan, Stefan. We won the FA Cup three three years ago, right? But yeah. Say we give it another three years and we don't win anything, right? What does, in your opinion, what does Arteta need to do for you to think, right? I've, I'm sick of this now. We've got to get someone else in. What, no, how, what point is, do you have to come to? No, Connor, there is a cutoff point. Yeah, I agree with you. There is a cutoff. What, what is that? He's asking you, what is that, Stefan? What is the cutoff? Point? I don't think it's this year. I think, in my opinion, nobody expected Arsenal to challenge for the league last year. Let's be all honest with you. Yeah, nobody fair. expected fair us to, to progress from fifth to almost winning the league last year. And Jess can laugh and drink his wine and talk shit that it was Emery's team. Jess, I'm going to ask you another fact. Would Emery have won the FA Cup if he had stayed on? Yep. And he'd have probably won us the Premier League. Are, are you serious? We were, we were fucking 14th when he got fired, Jess. Are you serious? No, I am very serious because at the end of the day, this guy is a proven winner. Look, look at what he's what, look at what he won. Right in Europe, yeah. Well, he got he got Arsenal. He got Arsenal and lost four one in the, the final. European Cup final and lost four one. We were embarrassed. Yeah, the team didn't turn up. Ah, uh, so it's not so it's it's Arteta's fault when shit goes wrong with Arsenal now. But the team didn't turn up. Isn't that on Stephane. the coach? What? Stephane. Tell me. Stephane. Tell me. Can I ask you a question? Can tell I, me. Yes, can, what Arteta has achieved in Europe. Tell me. Arteta hasn't achieved enough in Europe. I agree with you. Arteta isn't perfect. You guys think, but your criticism of him, Stefan, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Bit... Yeah, can I ask you a question? If, if you kept Unai Emery through the rough times, the tough times, like you did with no. Arteta, just hear me out, just like you did with Arteta, if you kept Unai Emery and gave him the kind of backing Arteta was given, would Unai Emery not be doing more damage than Arteta? Gave him the kind of backing. He got 150 million still. That 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 that. that the, the Arteta's, been given, Arteta's yes, been given 700. Yes, but Una Emery got 150 million, in which it was. I you're, mean, not, you're not answering my question. I, my my question is, if if you gave Una Emery time, like Arteta, three four years, no. and you gave him the money, would he not be doing better than Una Emery? I'll tell you why now. I'll tell you why now. It was obvious. It was every single Arsenal in the know journalist or whatever said it. Emery lost the dressing room. And I, I can't believe Arsenal fans can talk like this, especially Connor. When yeah, but Arteta got rid of all those players in that wait, dressing room. No, let me, Wasn't that the let problem? The dressing room let was the problem, no? Okay, wait. Let me answer why Emery could, wouldn't work. If you remember the Southampton game where we drew in the last minute 2-2, two, two, how – do you not remember the players not celebrating, equalizing because they realized they had saved his job? They had completely, complete. He had completely lost the whole dressing room. Those That's players aren't there anymore. The players were the problem, Stefan. That's the point I'm making. I just, I, I think there are certain coaches that are made like Una Emery that are made for teams that are a bit there that don't have the same expectations as like a top six cup, for example, like an Aston Villa, like a Villarreal, like a Sevilla, where he can he can do wonders because he's good. I don't think he has, and this has been proven. At PSG and at other and and and, it, and it, you know and, and at Arsenal, where he just cannot handle the pressure of being at a top club. I like Unai Emery. I think he's a top coach. I just didn't think he was suited for Arsenal. And some of the comments, like saying, "Do you guys not remember some of the away games conceding thirty three shots away to Watford? Do you like like and and Jez is coming up here and telling me we we're going to win the FA Cup with Unai Emery? Look at the defenders Jesus you had God. in that team." Look at your defenders and your wing back. They were shit. 
Yes, and Arteta managed to take Mustafi, okay, and win an FA Cup with him. So, in my opinion, what he did in those six months... Against 10-man Chelsea. We've been through this 100 times, man. Come on. You, they were that's the 10-man team. Can I say something? Because people... Really, Stel? No, no. Yes, that's, 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 FA, that's, yeah, that's, that's, oh, my God. Can I say something? Um, we beat Man City in the semi-final, Stel. Um, Stefan, let me say something. You sat back for 90 minutes. All right. <laughs> you, <laughs> you played Conte, table. You, you played Conte. You played Conte. You played in the League Cup. Yeah. All right, wait, wait, wait. You played Conte. Okay. <laughs> let me interject. Let me interject. Because I'm seeing some comments. First of all, not every Spurs fan, not every Arsenal fan think the same or will have the same opinions. It's not Thank an echo chamber. Thank you, Mario. Number one, um, a lot of the comments for some Arsenal fans, you do know Jez has been supporting the team since 1967. He's right. seen the heyday, right? As much as Stefan brings up, we haven't won trophies. You guys haven't won a trophy in 20 years. The the that uh, won the Premier League in 20 years. So... That is a huge point. Number two, if Jez disagrees with Stefan, because someone says fans like Jez, Jez has been an Arsenal fan since 67. He's been there and done that. I'm not saying his opinion has more weight than Stefan, but show some respect, some Arsenal fans in the, in the chat. All right? It's an honor to have Jez on here. He's oh, giving man. his real opinion about... Just ask Stefan. Stefan, yeah, we're just we're just yeah. debating. I don't agree with him. He doesn't agree with me. It's no. fine, like it. it no, no, I'm not talking about you, Stefan. I'm just talking about people yeah. in the chat. They're saying fans like Jez. Jez is a good Arsenal fan. So I, I I hate when people do that. Spurs fans, we do it same thing. Like you know, just because I think we want to take a game at a time. That you know, our goal is you know you know is really to find that identity. Yes, we're top of the league. You know, if if I don't believe that now that we're going to win the league, that doesn't make me less of a fan or more of a fan. You know, so I, I just wanted to just throw that out there. I just sorry, uh, yeah, look, at the end of the day, mate. I, I get this every day um, um, on 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 my channel. You know, and it, it really doesn't bother me because you know, um, I mean, it's Izzy Wizzy guy. I hate fans like Jez. But, well, unfortunately, yeah. mate. Um, I've seen that fella. You, 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 you were probably never a supporter before. Ignore him, Jez. Ignore him, man. It's just it's oh, mate, it doesn't worry me, man. It, it, they, they probably weren't a supporter before um, the Invincibles, so they actually don't understand what the football club is about. You know, I mean, I can sit here and wax lyrical about this, that, and the other, and that's fine, and it, it doesn't mean nothing. We are all football supporters of our clubs. Exactly. Spurs, you know, um, there's. I, I find it funny nowadays, comments about people, Spurs, Arsenal, whatever. You know, to me, where I was born in London, born right outside Highbury, you know, um, I've lived there pretty much most of my life, and so the rivalry is there. It's because our two clubs, you know, are up the road from each other. Um, and, it, you know, if you were born there, you get it. You understand it, right? You get it. it it's not I'm, – I'm not, I'm not talking about the stupidity days back in the 70s, 80s and all that, you know, what, what, went, what went on, right? It's history. It's history, guys. And if we can't sit here, right, and have a sensible adult debate without idiots coming in the bloody chat, then that's a sad indictment of what football talk is about today. That is what it's about. I mean, um, bold Ben Countess is our <laughs> South London team. Mate, let me let me bold Ben Counter give you some history, fella. Right. <laughs> When Arsenal on, moved, yeah. when Arsenal went right to Plumstead, and they created the Manor Ground, yeah, and then they went up to Highbury in 1914. Just a little little history. 
match. He might want to know. Highbury, as, yeah, Islington, as a borough of London, was a borough. Yeah. Tottenham wasn't in 1913. It was still a county. Right? So get your facts right, fella, before you come and question me. Because I'm I don't... Counter that, Jez. Jez, hold on. I'm, I'm going to counter that. Because right. Middlesex well, was part of London. Yeah, Middlesex, was, one minute, oh. Middlesex, Middlesex left London. Tottenham didn't leave. Whereas Arsenal, you left your location. We didn't leave ours. So the county leaving is different to the club leaving. We never left our location. Middlesex left London. No, we always well, stayed in North London. I'm this is saying. such a stupid it, argument. Who cares? It wasn't cares. <laughs> it wasn't a borough. Islington was a borough. But it was London. It was North London. Jez, who cares, man? We came. Oh, yeah. Yeah, come we, we came. We saw. We conquered. Yeah, we have more uh, trophies uh, than them. Uh, Whether look, we came, look, 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 we all know. I'm agreeing with maybe. Stefan on something. Let's hate each other for that because we don't give. Steph Listen, I think at the end of the day, Stefan, we both know we don't get on with all of our opinions, right? Facts. No. We don't get on. But we 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 don't go personal with each other. We don't have personal genders. We, if we had a drink at a pub and sat down, I guarantee we get on very well. That's so because you're both chat, To people that say in the chat <laughs> that we don't give respect to Stefan, maybe you think that's true. Maybe Stefan might think that at the end of the day, it's just a point of view where not everyone here agrees with Stefan's opinions and it's nothing wrong with it. It's just people have different opinions. You could happily have a hundred people here and they might not agree with me, but then apparently that's not respectful. In, at the end of the day, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be respectful if we didn't give Stefan a platform to speak on. We didn't get we didn't give Stefan time to speak. So I just want to make that clear. In my no, it's, it, Connor, it, 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 it's a joke it's how sensitive goes, right? people are. It's it's, it's like oh, because you kind of counter the point, or Jez got a little bit heated with me, or you got a oh, we don't respect each other. It's a debate. It's a football show. Like we're not taking each other so seriously that we're gonna go personal towards each other. We're debating points. That's it. Like sometimes it might get a bit heated. That's the point. If you want some show where there's classical music and you know people are talking very slowly and normally, you know this this isn't gonna be the actual show. That's not my my style person. I get heated from time to time. You know. So listen, it's, it's, guys, yeah. listen. I want to move. I want to move the show on. Right. Um, we're talking about history. Something happened uh, this week. And it might be surpassed tomorrow. Okay. And I want to see what everyone just thinks about it. This isn't a sign of any greatness, mm -hmm. but it's just, it's, it's, it's the truth. Um, and Posse broke the record for the best start to a league by any new manager. Um, <laughs> listen, listen, it's a fact. Right. It's just the way you were triggered. It's like, I just see them triggered. I, was like, <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just want to discuss where I'm it's, it's, There's so That's many, funny. so many achievements. Manager of the month. <laughs> it's so well, 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 Stefan, no, Stefan. Hand out the trophies. It's, 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 it's trophies. Just oh, well, 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 no, no trophies are won in October. So, but let's go by the facts to now, right? He, he's broken the record for the best start by any manager. Uh, most any teams, new manager, most teams so, well, let me let me finish manager. the point. Let me any new manager, yeah. Most teams, most teams that get to this many points after this many games either go on to win the league or minimum finish top four. Minimum, and and just so you know, if we beat Palace tomorrow, he will break the record <laughs> for any manager starting to a new season. And Spurs will have done something that very few teams have ever done, and that's to get over 25 points after 10 games. So, if that happens tomorrow. I just want to know yeah. what does everyone think about it because it's there's a strong reality. We probably will beat Palace tomorrow. Okay, guys, I want to say fair play, respect. You got it. We move on. It's not a trophy. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying it is though. I'm I not really saying it is. I'm just saying these are. You know, well done, respect it. If if, if Arteta did this, we'd have to talk about it as well, Connor. Well, yeah, exactly. And I say he hasn't. No, nice well well no, that's the thing. Uh, Listen to what no, I'm saying. He hasn't. Obviously, listen, listen. obviously, Ange is a better on coach, though. Stefan, one sec. Stephen, one sec. Well, well done to Ange and to Tottenham for doing it. You're in the history books for this. Guinness World Record, whatever. <laughs> nice. We move on to game week 11. Hey. Sorry. Hey, well, I'm sorry to the parade, but I'm no, sorry. No. You're in the history books for something. I, I, I don't understand why this fact rattles everyone so much. It's it's like, it's I, I, it I, never, I never asked for this to be a fact. There is no, no, spell, said, there is no other club that hypes up bullshit like this. Guy like Sports did not meet that, man. I'm not, I don't want this guy. <laughs> I said, I said, I'm telling you, 
The fact this is another oh. reason. Stop this. It, it's October. It's a great start. He's done really well. He started really, really well. That's what it's, I'm asking. It's, it's a That's great saying. start. Credit <laughs> as as respect as as Connor said. But this, if you don't do well or you don't finish in the top four at the end of the season, this will all be forgotten. And please, still, for goodness sake, man, you're a Spurs fan. Don't say that. Don't say no other team has never called, has never either won the title or not. Because you know Spurs, they're gonna do it. They're gonna but break the record. It's a fact. It's a fact that yes, it's a fact. Spurs fuck it up. Like either, they always either. do. But no, no. Well, we're not there yet, so we don't know. But it's a fact that teams that have done this either go on to win the league, or I said minimum get top four. That is a fact. Okay. Yeah. Respect. Well, that's, yeah. That's respect. respect. I mean, I just, I just wanted to see what everyone think about it. I didn't think yeah. you would lose this lot of me just saying. Let's just start. Let's start. Let's start. Let's start. Let's start with me and then Ash and then we'll go on. Um, like I said last night, wonderful start. If you had told me that this would happen, I would have told you, hey, what you're smoking, pass it along. All right. Whatsoever. So this has been wonderful. You know, VDV coming in, a revelation. Your doggy coming in. I mean, everything has worked out good. But also, too, context, right? Balance, right? Realistic. We know that we're not, you know, as much. And I'm a, I'm a man of hope. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a counselor. I work as a counselor. So I suppose there's still hope. But realistic hope. We're not winning the league. Right, we're we're not winning the league. Can miracles happen? Yeah, they can happen. Right, we're good. Like we said last night, there's a, a lot of things that have to go our way. We're gonna have to injuries, right? Because we're just one injury away from being uh oh in trouble. Because we don't have the depth, right? We saw the drop off, right? Every time they took out Sun and and Madison, right? It's a huge drop off. We go through the bulk. Right after that last international break, where we got Villa, City back to back, Basuma we got also in, we got in, Brighton in, in January. Got, yeah, Basuma. we got Brighton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get to that. Then we're gonna lose. They only missed two games. They only missed two games. Yeah, they're gonna miss two games in, in January, right? And then, and then also, you know, I'm not saying I suffer from post traumatic leaving disorder, but, <laughs> but if January comes. And we're like three points around City, four points. Will Daniel Levy, right? Will Daniel Levy back end? That's the million dollar question. But knowing my going back to my post traumatic Levy disorder, I know he usually doesn't back this team. And so I don't know. I'm just enjoying this a game at a time, game by game. And that's the only thing we should do. So, yes, no one's running out saying we win the league, going crazy like the football terrorists. Every, uh, you have half of the fan base saying, oh, we win the league, we win the league. No, I have football knowledge. I know that right now the big boys are City, Liverpool, Arsenal, but they're not playing like it, but they're, they're, we have but they're supposed to be there. But more right now, as of today, if you ask me who's winning the league, I'm gonna tell you, City, a hundred percent. If I'm betting with my wallet, so let's go to Ash. What do you think about that accomplishment? But it's a great accomplishment, and I'm happy. I basically think <clears throat> there's gonna be an upset with City because I can't see them the doing the treble the and going back to back and winning that titles. Normally, what happens when you have a treble winning season? you kind of fall off a little piece. And I'm not looking at what's happening right now in terms of them losing Rodri for a little piece. And they went three games, they lost. And the, the obviously they've lost um, Mares. Mares got them a lot of goals and a lot of assists. And also we look at um, Gundogan. Gundogan. Gundogan for me. The biggest X factor. He was a massive reason why they were getting those one nils, those one nils, those late winners. Yeah, and I just feel like there's gonna be someone that no one's looking at, and I'm not saying it's Spurs, by the way. I'm, I'm getting to it, but I just don't. Everyone's just saying City, City, City. It was just to counter Mari's point, yeah, because I also we all watch a lot of football, and it's it's a football debate, so that's why we're here, right? 
to debate things that we don't actually know the outcome of yet. So I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not sure. I feel like Pep's doing what what um, Arteta's doing. He's doing a lot of experimenting during the season. And that's what's costing him a lot of points, um, especially in that midfield three. That midfield three is doing a lot of tinkering and it's not quite working. But I do concede that where Man City are ready, they can go on a run and they can just turn it up and just put games together. That's the difference between City and the rest of us. Do you know what I'm saying? Spurs, I haven't seen that do that. I haven't seen Spurs go on a run like this ever. Like, where we just go on a, a super run where we're just winning, getting the Ws. And for me, like, it doesn't matter how you get the W at this stage, as long as you get the W. Do you know what I'm saying? Because this first season, we're not going to play, like, superstar football. We're still building. We're still learning. They're still learning the system. He's Ange came out and he was criticising the players over the performance. And then he said they haven't even understood the attacking field. He said, I'm happy with them defensively in the defensive thirds. They're getting it. But in the attacking system, we're still far off. Do you know what I mean? So that shows there's a lot more growth to go and there's a, there's a bigger scene. But already, I was, like Mari, I'm surprised that We've hit the ground running with like with Van der Ven. I didn't think Van der Ven would, would start so well. I didn't think Vicario, the goalkeeper, would yeah. settle in so quickly and would be able to play out from the from the back. Um Madison's Madison, like <laughs> do you know what I mean? I didn't expect Madison to do well, but the way Madison and Basuma are all able to interchange and, and you know dribble, we've got a lot of players that can like take up the pitch and swap positions and just look, we just look like a different threat. Um, but like, yeah, for me. A lot of Arsenal fans have come up to me and said, look, this is a carbon copy of Arsenal season. It's meaning that no one expected them. Everyone mm -hmm. ripped them off. And I think that's what's happening at the moment. Everyone's waiting for Spurs to lose. And for whatever reason, they're not taking us serious, which is better for me as a fan because I don't want us to look at everyone to look at us because when everyone does look at us, history will tell you that's where we, we tend to bottle it. And that's the reason why we've been called Spurs in the seasons. Do you know what I'm saying? And I think everyone could agree with that. So I prefer all of this. Yeah. Look at Spurs. Ha <laughs> ha. It's going to end at some point. Carry it on. I love, I'm here for it. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm here for it. Because even though we're not playing like super sexy football, I'm still enjoying the football. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And each game that goes on, we're improving, improving. Let us improve that front three. Let us have someone potent on that left wing. And I'm scared. Like, me, I'm a Spurs fan, right? And most Spurs fans, I'll be wrong, we're kind of media as a, fa as a fan base. Oh, no, don't say we're in a tight race. No, don't say that. Be realistic. Like, we're kind of, no, we are. We're like that. We don't go, like, against Palace, yeah, three points. You know, like, Arsenal are a little bit more bossy. Yeah, Sheffield United, easy. 6-1. Like, majority of our fan base, we don't, some of our fan base does. Like, some of them are happy clappers, whatever, or delusional, whatever you want to phrase or whatever, coin the phrases. But a lot of Spurs fans that I talk to, they're like, don't say title race, don't say like, that. We're quite nervous. We're quite nervous in, in demeanor. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sure you lot have come across a few Spurs fans like that as well. So for me, the longer it goes on, we're under the radar and Ange is able to do what he's able to do. I reckon, because Ange came in, he said straight, I'm a winner. He came in, he said, I'm a winner. People didn't give him that respect. Look, still not getting that respect. I but it was Celtic. Oh, but it was in Japan. Blah, 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 blah. So no one's really rating him at the moment. But I reckon he was surprised at the start that he's having, right? But in the back of his mind, he knows that you need to kind of manifest that success. Like you kind of, you've got to say what you mean. If you don't say what you mean and you don't truly believe it, then it won't happen. And I reckon quietly to his players, he's not saying, all right, let's try and aim for a sixth place or let's try and aim for an eighth or let's try and aim for a fourth. Bro, he's a winner, bro. I reckon... Behind closed doors, he's got the arms around them, and he's like, "Listen, guys, I'm a winner. And whether it happens this season or or next season, I'm here." Like he he said he, that Fulham that Fulham L, he took a while for him to kind of get his head around that because he doesn't take losing very well, but he uses that as energy and fuel. So for me, that I'm here for vibes. I'll be real because I was like Mari, I I predicted eighth because I was emotionally affected by last season. I was. And so I predicted off the back of my motions rather than predicting on 
Like, we needed a goalkeeper. We've got a good goalkeeper. We needed a centre-back. we got a good centre-back. We needed a top DM. Basuma was there. We saw. We just didn't realise. Obviously, you know, now they're there. They're, they're balling. Do you know what I'm saying? We lost Kane. We lost. That was massive for us. Top score. 30 goals. Like, top English striker. You name it. Yeah? We lost him. Lots of people put with down tools and finished like 10th or maybe below. Do you know what I'm saying? We haven't done that. Scott is firing, playing some of the best football of his life. I feel like he's one of the best finishers, left foot, right foot. He can do it. Do you know what I'm saying? I think the more he plays in that role, the more his game intelligence and his awareness is going to happen. People are saying he can't do a low block, but I saw what he did against Arsenal's three of your, three of your players in, in, in Rice, um, um, Saliba, and I, I can't remember if it was Gabriel, but three of your players got sucked in. He was still able to get across and finish that, that chance off that Madison produced. So, and, and I do concede that we're, we're two players or one player away from, from going back to normal because, <laughs> like, we saw what happens every time we take Madison and Son off. We just don't look the same team. So I'm not under any illusion that work needs to be done, that we need more players that we don't have so much of a drop off. I'm not saying we can get a play on Manus's level, but we just can't have that drop off when we bring a uh, a skip on or a um, a Hoiberg or a Mr. Royal comes on like all at once. If that makes sense, it's too many players all at once, and we drop down. And that's the reason why this season I can see why we might not be in a title race because of the depth. As similar to you, like no one looked at you guys. But you were suffering from the depth. I think the differences between us and you lot, I feel like we're a lot more fluid because mm. players are able to interchange. After, this, is, this is my opinion. You can you can you can you can say it after, but the way Madison's allowed to drop in midfield, for me, the way he's allowed to drop in midfield, and 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 um, what's it called? Destiny's allowed to drop as an attacking kid. He said it. He said it off, after the pitch. He goes like, "A manager just allows us to play." Oh, play. Uh, and I, I looked up. I see destiny on the half turn again. That's that was Madison's words, not my words. No. That was Madison's words. I, 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 I just want to ask you one thing: Who do you think would win, Arsenal last season at their best, like in the first three four months from like? August? I think Arsenal would win. At, I think Arsenal would win right now. Only because, you guys only, now. Because, only because yeah. you lot were into your build. A lot longer, and your front three is a lot more were a lot more clinical than ours. Like Saka had a wonderful season, Martinelli yeah. was having a great season. I can't debate that. Do you know what I'm saying our front three it needs work, and I'm saying if so for whatever reason, if Johnson ever gets it right, if Johnson, I'm telling you, if John, I'm not, I'm not saying he is, but I'm saying if Johnson comes out and he can bang between eight to ten goals, but he can assist an equal amount will be a problem. If he's at threatening behind and he can run in behind those defences, that will help, like Stel was saying, Kulizewski raise his game, I think. Do you know what I'm saying? And and Son's doing Son. If Son just carries on his trajectory, then I, I think we can be a problem. And and that's what I think Spurs' problem at the moment is. It's the, it's the wing forwards that threat behind. When, when Liverpool went down to 10 men, I just I, said, yeah, I, Diaz and Salah. Guys, can I just interrupt? Just, 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 just oh, I thoroughly enjoyed the show. I'm on granddad duty tonight because the wife and the two girls have buggered off. So I'm looking after all the kids. Um, I'm sorry to say the six month old is starting. She wants feeding. So I've got to <laughs> do that. Um, Stelios, Mary, Ashmatic, Stefan, Connor. Great chat. Every in the chat. Great fun. Absolutely loved it. It's nothing personal. There's nothing personal. We have a chat and debate and all that. Jez, cool. quick question before you go. Quick question before you go. Um, assuming Jesus and Partey both out for the Sheffield United game, Sheffield United, 2-1 loss to Tottenham, 2-1 loss to Man City and 2-1 to someone else. They're not as easy as people think. Without no. Jesus and Partey, what do you think the score will be? Against against Newcastle? Newcastle? Let, 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 let Jez answer. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, let's be honest. In, in in a in a real real world, in a real real fantasy world, it I I you know I'd expect an Arsenal four 0 at max minimum. It ain't going to be yeah. that. We we know that. We ain't going to be that. Um, um, Jesus out, Partey out. Ah, oh, dear God. Let let me give you let, let you give my prediction. I'm I'm going to go. With, I'm I'm. I'm going to go 2-0 Arsenal. Um, 
you know, shocking really. And you think, anyway, guys, I've got to go. She's she's starting to kick up, and I'll. And, cheers, cheers. Um, big up, cheers. Big up, cheers. Um, Ashmak, you can. Hey, okay, guys, thanks, thanks, thanks for the uh, thanks for the show. It's been great. I loved it. And uh, thanks everybody in the chat. Thanks you guys. Take care. All right. Take care, Jez. See you later, man. Take care, Take care Jez. Hey, Top man. Um, yeah. Ash. Yeah. Yes. Let's go, mate. I just finished up because I've I've kept quite the whole the whole pretty much the whole stream, but respectfully yes. to you guys because obviously <laughs> it's your team. Don't no want to interrupt. You know what I'm saying, but what I was saying is with Conte, he left us at fourth. He was pushing for third, right? He was he was pushing for third. So technically, what Conte had built a team that was capable of getting top four for a lot of the season. We were in the top six, right? And so. When I predicted eighth, like I said, I was predicting with emotion because that's where we, we finished off. Remember, Mason took over and it was at 7-1 or whatever, 7-0 that we got slumped to, to Newcastle that completely just derailed us. Even that Liverpool comeback, that that was <laughs> insult to injury. So my emotions was predicting of that. And now as the season's gone on, I feel like, am I allowed to change my predictions after what I've seen? This is what I'm doing. I think any logical person would do that. They would look at what's in front of them, what's happening with their team, and then they would readjust what they actually thought. And so what I'm saying with Conte's team that that was pushing for fourth, or well, was in the fourth uh, position that was pushing for third, sorry, we just needed the centre-back, right? We needed the centre-back, as I said at the start, and we needed the creative mid. Do you know what I'm saying? Those were the two positions. And obviously, Lloris needed replacing as well. And also the left back, the, the, the full back situation. And it, some people could say the right back as well, because Emerson Royal and Poro, that was a whole conundrum where we couldn't have a full back that could attack or one that couldn't defend. And now it seems like those question marks have been solved. And now with one game a week, for example, our next game against Palace, we'll have 10 days of rest, 10 days for us to work on tactics. Momentum for me in sports is a real thing. Sports psychology, I real I really think that really helps with players. Men like preparing for the next games if you're coming off the back of the win, like going against Chelsea. Um, the actual fans as well, at, like going in the stadium myself. I actually went to the stadium three times a season, and I think when they're playing, like I don't know, I don't know what they do at the Emirates, but we've got like the songs, but we've got like the instruments. So we've got a drummer. And still, what is it else as well? We've got a drummer. And we've got um, someone that plays. Before kick off. To be fair, I went to the Emirates, uh, Ash, for the Spurs North London derby, and uh, their their atmosphere is actually it's, 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 they've got a good atmosphere going on at the Emirates now as well. I, I'm just yeah, saying for yeah, me, got, me personally. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Just to end it, I'll end no, it. Go on, Ash, on. Off, yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, that Ash is like Conte. If you ask him a question, you get a 15 minute answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just going to say my piece, and then afterwards you won't hear from me again. Well, for a long time. But I just when I heard that trumpet, it was just the connection with the fans. I said, "Yo, the lights went off." Obviously, it's a new stadium, and this, the energy just felt a whole heap, a whole, a whole real difference. And I feel the players feel that on the pitch, especially it's a new, when it's it's a new energy, energy, isn't it? It's a new energy. Even, even when they're singing the and song, when they're singing the and song, it doesn't matter where we are in the game. We could be playing poor. We could be playing really well. But we don't stop as a fan base. We don't stop. And those players, I feel like they feel it. They can feel that. I think they're buzzing. I think even Ange comes out and he's energized. You know what I'm saying? I think that's a real thing when you feel the energy of the crowd and you energize. You just gets like a 13th or 12th man at times and it helps you to push on. But yeah, that's it. That's what I was going to say. That's Actually, that's man, it's that's called the manager bounce, guys. When are you guys going to realize that it's just the, it's <laughs> 10, 10, ten you're games going, you're going through it right now? Every it's, point it's I bounce. made, it's every, bounce, every point I just made about Conte having us fourth, <laughs> what plays we needed to push on from that. <laughs> that, that the Steph, energy... even you're laughing, man. Even you're course, laughing. I'm taking a bit, of course, I'm taking a I look, I'm biased, so I'm gonna give. At least, he's honest. at least he's on his. At least he's on the manager. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give a more bias, and I would say I will be honest. A more rival fan take. In my opinion, although you have been much better rival this fan month, hate. 
Cloud Vision. Okay. Hate. Call it still call it hate. Okay, hate. And cloud your vision. Hate okay. can cloud your vision, by the way. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. That's true. Emotional. Look, emotional. look one thing's for sure. I after, I, after I I do my quick analysis of Spurs, the uh, chat is gonna love me. So, in my opinion, although you have been good value for the points that you've made, if you watch the games that you have played, a number of them you have been a bit fortunate. Where yeah. if yeah. the if the actual cookie crumbled another way, you would have you would have lost. And for example, I'll give you I'll give you one game, Man United at home. Although you did outplay them in the second half completely, and you deserved your win in the end from the second half. First half, let's be honest, first 30 minutes, Man United should have scored two goals. And 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 they didn't get a, a clear penalty. So that game could have gone bad for you guys. The Brentford game. And Buemo scores that game, you probably lose that game where he missed pretty much an open goal. So there are games where, although you have played well and the style of play is obvious, which, you know, is great for Spurs, you look like you have an identity. It's it's great. The thing That's is, though, guys, and this is what I noticed with Arsenal, not only last year, but also the season before when we were kind of we were favorites to be top four like everybody was saying we're gonna get top four the thing is 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 it's easy to play when nobody takes you seriously like like i said where you're under the radar just like us last year where everybody's like oh, arsenal are playing great we're not gonna call them title contenders yet it's still too early it's december it's you know let's just let let them enjoy the moment and play their best but once people start taking you seriously and that pressure hits you can see it. Arsenal, it changed Arsenal in the end. The last few months of Arsenal, Arsenal looked nervy as hell. There were games like the Bournemouth game where they scored from kickoff. Oh, it was the a Southampton game. game. Was so, a oh, God, here we go again. What? I'm just saying, the, 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 the excuse changes every every day. <laughs> Controlled my, football, my Saliba, Saliba, now it's pressure. Saliba. pressure. Do you know, uh, let's still, can I'm, I see? Do you know I'm, what? I'm, I'm going to agree with Stefan here. I think it was, was a mix it? of Wait, wait, wait. wait. Let, me, wait let, let, let me just, because you interjected. I didn't say that was the main reason we lost. I'm saying that you're going to feel that pressure where it's going to hit your team, where suddenly people are Stefan, taking you seriously. You know, can, I, can, I, can I be honest? And, you're, I, I and it's I, not going to be the same. I, I, I don't buy any of this. Should I tell you what I think happened to Arsenal and why I think? You, I'm not. Stel, no. stop creating narratives and putting no, shit in. I didn't say thing. that. I haven't no. told you what I think. No. <laughs> I haven't told you what I think. I think, so I annoying, think man. the reason you lost the title is the same reason that will potentially fuck Tottenham up, right? In that January transfer window, we're going to get Vlaovic. Vlaovic is coming to Arsenal. I don't, I don't care whether it was true, fake, whatever. You didn't Madrid. buy a striker. I think if you went and got that striker, I think you might have lifted the Premier League last season. And I'm saying this year, right? G Chain, he's in the chat. He's my friend. He's my witness because he likes receipts. I said to him a month ago, maybe a bit more, Spurs this season with dark horses, but it's going to come down to whether Levy backs us in January. Just like you never got backed in January, if the dark same shit happens to us, we will go down the same path as you. I, I guarantee it. No, so in my opinion, I think it was a, so it was it wasn't down to just Saliba leaving. I think it was also down to like what um Stefan said, which I agree with by the way. If anyone thinks that it's a five v one, it's not. I agree with Stefan. It's fine. It was also down to a lack of experience. In that field, yeah, we have, and uh, you might think, Oh, here it comes again. We had a very young team who have never experienced Premier League title, title charges. charges or anything like that. And I think when it came down to the moment when they had that little hurdle to run over, Saliba was definitely a part of it missing 100% because Rob Holding wasn't the answer, nowhere near. I think if he Timber can't even, would... make, can't even make the Palace team, man, exactly. So I think it was, I think it was down to the fact one, Saliba was out, two, an experience, and again, so I agree with you, three, if we had that striker. I think those two things would have been knocked out. The who did you who did you buy in January last year? Trossard and Jordania. Trossard. There was no there was no striker Trossard, available. I mean, Trossard, 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 Trossard and Jorginho. Stuff. Yeah, but guys, right? Which, okay, which so Jorginho was a nothing. Trossard, I think, was a good signing. Maybe Trossard maybe was if a you brilliant bought, signing. Trossard Trossard helped so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe Trossard. if you bought them, maybe maybe if you bought a centre back even on loan. Listen, maybe if you bought maybe a centre back on loan, Trossard. And the striker, even if you've got a striker, I don't know, that would have done it, I think. And the same is going to happen to Spurs. My word, come January, all lies on Daniel Levy. It'll be the same shit with us. I can see it. It's, 
But still, it's easy to say if we had signed. There was no quality striker available. Money talks, bro. January, Money talks. Though. Money talks, man. It's okay. always still, which striker? Which who could we have signed that would have Gabriel Jesus in January? At that point, was our probably our best performing player before his injury. I don't know. World. That's why you've got I a thought, scouting department. We were in scouts. I thought we were bringing in Trotter to go in that center forward role originally. That's what I thought. I thought we were bringing in Trotter. I like. I honestly, I'm trying to rack my brain. Apart from Ozzyman, who was leading a title charge with Napoli, so he was he was never going to leave what, for any money. Or Ivan Tony, who I don't think uh, I just I, I don't think he was available for any sort sort of price, especially with Arsenal. Where I mean, we tried to sign Caicedo. Which I honestly do think, if we had signed Caicedo, I really do think we probably would have won the league. I, well, there I you do go. Think that so, 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 my argument is: it's not about pressure. It's not about yeah, but, um, controlling games. For me, yeah, it's all still, about personnel. And you didn't, you didn't have the personnel because you didn't back it in January. Well, and I still, think Spurs are going down a similar road. I think we're going down that similar road. I agree. Did, I agree. We did everything to sign Caicedo. Brighton said he is not for sale for any price. We couldn't sign. Like, Brighton said Mudrick no. Well. Don't, don't forget Mudrick. We tried to go. Yeah, Mudrick. We tried to sign Mudrick and then Chelsea came in with a ridiculous 100 million bid. Okay, like, so you go to plan B. You go to plan C, no? Yeah, and we did go to plan B. We signed Trossard where, I mean, I mean, I arguably think for the value of money and the goals the and this he's done, the I think player. he's a way better signing than than than, than Mudrik currently. Maybe in two or three years we might be saying that Mudrik was a better signing. Forget but two or three years. That January window okay, was a chance to try and get it over the line. Has obviously been the better decision. The only thing that that I was disappointed was I really wanted Caicedo because I thought Caicedo was a quality, and I thought he would have really upgraded our our midfield depth and our midfield in general, but. The Brighton guy, uh, what's his name, Tony Bloom, said he's not for sale for any price. Not any price. We we offered eighty million. We offered, and this was before he was worth the hunt before before the actual uh, Declan Rice sale. So the the top money for any midfield player. Back can I, can I be honest with you, man? I, I I I I've heard these same excuses from Spurs fans for the last five years. I've been excuses. arguing with Spurs fans. They are because Liverpool. They knew <laughs> they needed to do something. And in December, they got their house in order. And at the start, very early on, they went and dealt and got that Diaz guy on the wing. They got business done early because they planned ahead. Whereas Tottenham, we get to the last day of the window and we're like, are we going to sign anyone? Are we going <laughs> to do anything here? We did it with Porro. We did it with Benton Court. We did it with Kulusevski. If but you're serious, still... if you're in a serious position in the league, you go into January having your shit in order Ready to go. So no. as soon as it's first of December, first no. uh, of January, no. well, it's, not, it's not Arsenal to a T. Still, it's Arsenal to a T. We spent over two. That's what we do, Connor. Million. We're the same. That's what I mean, still, it was never going to happen. We were never going to buy that striker. It's the way Arsenal work. It was never going to happen. No, it, Arsenal. It's the past no. now. Still, it's your favourite. It's the past now. We can't change it. It's your favourite. The past. We can't change it. And it is what it is. So, so, still, still, still no, is giving, is giving wrong comparisons. Diaz, Porto were willing to discuss a fee. You guys agreed a fee, but Diaz heard that Liverpool were interested, so he thought, "I want to go to Liverpool over the Spurs." Point is, the point is, that the player was available to buy. The homework was done in advance. Oh. That's the point. <laughs> Let's go to predictions because we got to end the show in a couple of minutes. Let's go to predictions. All right, we have two games because uh, us two teams um, involved. First, we got Arsenal. Uh, versus Sheffield United. Uh, Sheffield United surprisingly has played everybody tough. Um, the, 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 the top the first game, tough. And the so game. I think um, this looks like it's going to be – I don't think Sheffield United scores. I think Arsenal wins one nothing over Sheffield. one nothing, one nil, one nil. Come on, Come on Mar, man. man. Yeah, yeah one nil. I have it. Uh, one day they're gonna play the low block, and you guys are gonna be all game trying to. Paris to, uh, trolling, man. Paris trolling. <laughs> <laughs> one day, and then um, we have a similar game um, against Crystal Palace. They don't have Olise. They don't have Eze. So they're just gonna play the low block, and so I think we'll squeak two in. So I'm going two two nil, um, um, over. Crystal Palace and 1-0 Arsenal over Sheffield United. 
Um, you're, so you're gonna beat Crystal Palace by a bigger margin than Arsenal are gonna beat Sheffield. <laughs> oh god, don't make this into a debate, please. Don't make this into a debate. Okay, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm gonna go into that. All right, what's your uh, prediction for both the, games? Oh, my, um, no, because uh, I, this is just for the Arsenal and the Spurs games, yeah. For the yeah. Arsenal game, I'm gonna go for a 4 0 win. 4 0. Who's scoring four okay. goals for you, bro? Four no. Wow. Four goals for us. Saka, yeah. Martinelli. Uh, have us, have us double, mate. Have us double. It will happen, mate. Trust me. Have us double. Yeah, two two, of course. Well, yeah, three 0 Spurs at Selhurst <laughs> Park, where you've you know you've had some bad results there, but yeah. <laughs> <Too> <laughs> Yeah, okay. I swear to God, no one comes in. Does no one show up next week? Don't you dare show your face. He's a troll, bro. He's a troll. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go four no Arsenal, and I think uh, Martinelli is gonna score uh, two goals. I think Saka will score a goal, and then I think uh, I think Eddie will will score a goal. Maybe I don't know. But I what about the Palace? What about the Palace game? So four nil. You're gonna blitz. uh, The Palace game is difficult, guys, because Palace. Under the lights, late game, that's usually a very difficult game. Um, I don't know this game. Like, I'm struggling between a draw or a Spurs win. Um, yeah. This guy's just going to mug us off with a draw. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go a, one, one, a 1 1 draw because I think, uh, I sure. think Palace away is, is a very difficult game. Okay, 1 1. Um, Connor, what's your predictions for the Arsenal and the Spurs games? As as I'm not a Tottenham expert, I was having a look at the head to head, your last results of them. You beat them 1 0 last season and you smashed them at Selhurst 4 0. I looked at it and I thought, Jesus, you lost 3 0 to these guys at Selhurst Park. But then I saw you got a red card and Dyer came off in the 12th minute. So <laughs> Tanganga, Tanganga yeah. got red. I remember that one. Yeah. So. And you've won, you've beaten them 15 times in the last in the last 10 years. They've only won four. As much as I want to say, oh, Crystal Palace is going to get this, and it is at Selhurst Park. I don't really think Crystal Palace are going to put up as much as a fight as I want to. So I'm going to go for I'm going to go for two 0 Tottenham, unfortunately. And uh, for Arsenal, I'm going to go. Oh, Sheffield is shite, man. I'm sorry, they're shite. They're terrible. We're going to win three nil. Crisis. Three nil. Their squad is injured. Yeah, three nil. Arsenal. It's at home as well. North London forever, mate. I hate that. Uh, all right, okay. Three, three nil. Um, Ash, what's your predictions? Um, I'll go with Spurs first. Um, Palace. So Palace don't have Elise. Yeah. Don't have Eze. Yeah, that's true. Um, looking a bit toothless, if I'm being completely honest. Against Newcastle, they were very poor. I know they were away at home, but um, they're not looking quite the same. Um, well, what? Yeah, Hudson. I don't know. I'm just a bit iffy about Palace. I know it's um, the Croydon man then, but yeah, I think Spurs will come. We're on form at the moment. The only probably issue I'd probably have is maybe the Yudogi situation. I'm not clearer yeah. on it. Is he uh, is he fit for the game, guys? Because I read yeah, that he's a doubt. The only thing I wasn't we don't sure. Know. We don't know. Yeah, it's a touch and go thing. So I think three one Spurs. So we might concede if if um, your doggy's missing. Um, it's a bit iffy. If Emerson Royal's there, Ben Davies is obviously out. That that might be their way in. And I saw what Fulham were doing to us. Um, so that's really my only question mark. But can I ask? Awesome. Really, really curious. Is Lloris just waiting to leave the club? I'm yeah. thinking people go, oh, Connor, yeah. he's living the yeah. life. He's, he's getting paid his last That's year. He's, he's chilling. just gone ghost mode. He's literally he's chilling, man. He's chilling. He's getting so I, thought, paid. I thought it was weird. I just think he's still on the contract. I thought, he is. That's he is. He is. what it is. I'd do the same. I would. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. So, yeah respect. Yeah, respect it. Uh, Arsenal, um, you don't got to win that game easily. You have to. You have to be like, they're terrible. They're terrible. I mean, I knew you were poor, but Sheffield. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, guys, if you watch Sheffield, man, you. They played better than Man, man United played counter attacking football against them. They, they, but also, I want to quickly say so, sorry, Ash, to uh, interrupt you. I think goal difference is going to play a big part this season. 
a big yeah. pot. So these are the type of games in no disrespect to Sheffield where we got to capitalise and just not concede your score. Yes. Well. But yeah. Yes, I, I, I do concede that. But I just look at you lot this season and you're averaging like two goals per game. Yeah, like, it's not, it's not great. really it's not seeing you blow teams away. So I'm going to go over 2-0 to, to Arsenal. Fair. Fair. 2-0. Um, I, I, I don't think Arsenal are going to beat Sheffield one bit. I think this is a game where you're going to be a little bit leggy from the Seville game. Jesus and Partey out means you've got to bring in the frauds like Kai Havertz and Jorginho. <laughs> and I think Sheffield United are just going to stick everyone behind the ball, hardly do anything, maybe just pump one up long and set piece or a penalty yeah. somehow. I, I think 2-1 Arsenal. 2-1 Arsenal. I think yeah. you'll win it. They're, they're going to even but score I, a goal on us, still. Yeah. Yeah, I think they'll score. Damn it. I could, you know what, Stella, you say that actually, I can see because I think, Stefan, you can agree with me. When, because it is annoying as fuck, when we see teams that like to just sit back, we find it yeah. so hard to break them down at times. It's not our fault, it's just the fact that they're just too tight. And that's actually, I'm actually quite worried about that now. I think about that stuff. Connor, I think, I think every team struggles against a low block. Yeah. Man City beat them 2 1 this year, and Man City are Man City. We just about beat them 2 1. Man mm -hmm. United, was it a last minute? Two goals against no, Sheffield. No, but but still, Man City. They're, 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 they're very very difficult because their football is so so difficult, man. It's but just, wait, it's but wait, is. still, still, the Man City game. Although they beat them two one, they missed so many chances. Like mm. I think the XG at the end was they had like over twenty five shots, and the XG was like three point something. So the Man City game, they just didn't put up put away their chances. The Man United game, Sheffield did not play like that. Sheffield played with a high line. They pressed Man United and they attacked them. Like they completely played differently. At the Emirates, are they gonna drop deep? Yes. The point where I don't think they even have a chance is one, they're crap. They're a championship level team. And two, half of their squad is injured still, including Dude, their best They're players. gonna do exactly what they did to us. They're gonna put everyone behind the ball. They're gonna every. exaggerate every foul, every little knock. They're gonna go down for two, three, four, five minutes. They're gonna slow down the flow of the game. They're gonna shit out. They Dude, right. we had 12 minutes, 12 minutes of added on time because of the amount of delay and BS, and it costed them in the end. They'll do it to you as well. But that's why I'm going 2-1. We'll, 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 we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Saturday was we'll, 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 yeah, we'll Sheffield we'll United are proper we'll A-holes. Huh? They're yeah. an A-hole. Well, well, Sheffield United play like Donald Trump, so you know, you'll, uh, see, uh, you'll, you'll see. <laughs> when I even got the game, it was so dirty. Like I'm like, I really hate this stuff for United. But, but even yeah. but 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 in that game, they had McBurney, they had Archer. Why is my prediction of debate? Everyone gets the prediction. I'm going to debate it. <laughs> 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 Fucking emergency <laughs> meeting. Marry on on my prediction. <laughs> <laughs> If you two were a married couple, you'd be killing each other by now. I swear to God, I make one prediction. Right, emergency meeting. Everyone, I would one hundred percent. I would. I. I would. I would kill. I would kill. Stuff. I would kill stuff. I swear to God. Listen, one one person will be laughing in the group chat. It'll be Stel or it'll be Stefan this weekend. So we'll wait and see. I mean, I, I mean, uh, Connor. If we don't beat Sheffield this week, man, I'll eat all my words. You're completely right. Like. Damn. We're not as good as, as I, I think. Said, I said we've all we've all predicted you'll win. We've all predicted. Yeah, you'll win. yeah. I mean, you it would be put, ridiculous. So you have to put in the fit for it's like, well, but Sheffield will do this and do that. Yeah, and because because I just think they're going to do exactly what they did to us to you. I think they'll go there with the same. Because you. listen, yeah. against Spurs, they nearly pulled it off, guys. They were three minutes yeah. away from yeah, pulling it off. <laughs> Yeah, but it's, no it's like, I think they'll try it again. It took, it, it took the refs to help you, like they did it against Liverpool by giving you 12 minutes. So no, you know, because, oh, because, because they time. went down for four minutes every single time. Oh, Listen, yeah, that's, that's, true. that's that's true. That's true. That's true. Two one's my prediction. Um, and then Spurs Palace game five I think, I, I think Palace have just they've got too many injuries to their best players man like no team like if Spurs yeah. lost their best players we'd be fucked as well and their wing backs are shocking absolutely awful so yeah i think mm. i think i think it will be 3-1 to spurs but i don't think it's going to be a game where we just batter them i think we're just going to be clinical at the right time how dare be... you disrespect the defensive attributes of crystal palace you got like this is the shit you do it's not the shit you do in the next anderson time. anderson's top man i'll take He's anderson very good. Anderson's very good. i love anderson as well. what about Gwehi? He's, he's, he's had a good season, yeah. 
this yeah, year. It's, 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 I, I, I could see Anderson being a Tottenham signing. I could just see that. I don't know oh, what I want to point out something uh, about Palace that I've noticed. This player, I've been impressed with him every time I watch him for Palace. And I'm thinking for next year, if we sell Partey, I, I really want to see him up against the best midfielder in the world in, in Basuma. And that's Sheikh Dukure. I'm, mm. I, I've been really yeah. impressed. Every time I've watched him play, he's been very, he's very good. I really want to see he's I really want to see that, that, that battle because Dukure, for me, in the next, I would say, six months to a year, will move to a top six club. Bro, probably going check, to out, check out a midfielder who really? plays for Mitch and Gladbach. Um, Will, Will showed me him. His name is... Oh, Kone? Kone? Wicked. Manu Kone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got him with Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kone's yeah, dope. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, dope. He excellent. No, he's, yeah, he's quality. Yeah. I'm he's surprised. Very, I, was, I, was, I think Liverpool uh, wanted him. I think Liverpool was trying to go in. They did, but, but he's run, I think he's running down his deal. Uh, so I, I think that's the plan for him. And... I was actually really impressed yesterday with the Borussia Dortmund guy who scored, uh, and and Mecha. And, and oh, and Mecha. Mecha, yeah, yeah. He's isn't he? All, he's before. Actually, wait, hold on. Dude, the number eight, the the Japanese guy for Celtic. Oh, I can't sick. Even oh, Celtic did good. Number eight. Well, Hatate. Hatate. Rio Hatate. I don't know. No, no, no. That's the that's oh what through through ha Fu Fu Hashi Fu Hashi. Yes, yes. Spurs don't make a bid for that guy. We're gonna miss a massive trick. <laughs> energy levels. If him the and the the did he work with yeah. Ange? Yeah. Uh, the... uh, for, for from what I'm reading, Spurs are gonna make a move for Calvin Phillips though. So. Get ready. Get ready for we that. We won't sign Calvin Phillips. Oh, no. also going for Why not? He's the perfect Spurs player. Yeah. Kind of not. a good English player. And, not... and now if you look if you look if you look at his stats and the, and, and the way in terms of his passing, nah. He doesn't he doesn't and, meet the criteria at and, all. Yeah, but, yeah, but Ange, 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 Ange really liked and really wanted Connor Gallagher. He's quite similar. No, no, Connor Gallagher is better than him, man. Connor yeah. Gallagher is so shit. Like, oh, just, I just don't How can you say that? He was one of the best players of the couple of seasons ago. He was great. How is Connor Gallagher? We've done our predictions. We'll be back next week. Uh, North London is out. Another panel. God knows. God knows how it's going to, it's, it's just going to get worse each week as the results come in. <laughs> um, uh, Connor, when are you on TJ's show soon? When, when, when um, I was on TV's uh, earlier for, for for our Let's Be Real show, which you call Let's Be Fraud show, Stel. So cheers for that. <laughs> um, That's good. That's bad. So cheers for that. I was on that earlier. He's got American Idiots coming up tomorrow, but I don't think I'm on that. I think I'm too busy. But uh, yeah, uh, you can find me on Instagram, uh, cmo.editing. That's my name there, cmo, but just dot .editing. I do graphics as a side thing. And uh, yeah, I do graphics for TJ. And a couple of you, and Jez, I've done stuff for Jez as well, who was on earlier. So if you want to find me, any graphics work for your YouTube channels, cmo.editing on Instagram. I probably should put it in there, but I'll do it next time. But yeah, thanks guys for having me on. I, I, as much as we argue, I love this show. I actually look forward to it every Thursday. I think it's a laugh. I think it's a problem. <laughs> I love so, it. so cheers. Thanks for having me on. We appreciate it. We got uh, Ash representing South Yukoi's channel with Hass and Marlon. When are you guys back on again, Ash? And um, um, you're, you're, so you're welcome to come back anytime you feel that unwell cool. that you need to come <laughs> on here. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, so we got a show, post match show for uh, Palace on Friday. Um, I'm back on, on Tuesday to do my show. Um, yeah, that's it, really. That's it, man. Okay. All yeah. right. South View Coys, make sure you go check them out. Uh, Tottenham Away, we're live tomorrow, pre match show. No, watch along and post match show. There's about 10 different channels doing the same thing, so take your pick. And then uh, I'm sure something on the weekend. And then Monday, our podcast as always. Guys, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe to all the channels. Follow everyone. And just hit the like. Yeah. You go off, hit the like. Smash a like. Later. Stell's a fraud. <laughs> Connor's a fraud. Stefan's a fraud. <laughs> 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 <laughs>